Okie dokie. This is like attempt number 462. Okay, let's try this. Um, yes, the game is actually showing up. Great. The game was not showing up on the uh, OBS, on the streaming software before. And I tried everything and it didn't work. And then I had to actually shut the stream off and start googling around and try different things. And now finally it works. So the game's here. I'm playing the game in windowed mode now. Um, but quite a big window. Covers most of the screen. Um, it has the advantage that I can actually see the chat while I'm playing. Um, which is good, I guess. So let's see. Uh, I'm wondering if we should wait for one or more two people to pop in, but I don't think we should because chances are that no one's going to pop in. Now I don't know if the volume of my voice. I have to keep my voice low because it's late and the neighbors want to sleep or might want to sleep. So I have to keep my voice down. Um, and if the game is too loud, let me know. Then I can try to lower the the game volume so that my voice will still come through, hopefully. I, I can only hope. Okay, let's see. So, um, I'm pretty excited. I've never played this game before. I know that it's a series by the, uh, this time. Uh, there's several parts. I don't know how many parts. Let me check. There's seven parts. Seven parts, actually. That's a lot. And uh, this is the absolute first one. It's from 1989. Um, it has, according to Wikipedia, it has a game rankings um, score of 65%. That's not very good. But it's also not horribly bad. So um, I bought it on GOG um, simply because it looked cool. Uh, it looked like a cool game to play. And I had it sitting in my library for a very long time. And um, I thought, why not use it as the first game ever for the stream? Um, my, my plan is, if this is working out with the streaming, that I want to play uh, indie games and retro games. I like old games, if they're good, and um, uh, because I don't really mind graphics, as long as the game is still playable without going crazy. Um, I read a bit into the manual of the game, uh, just had a quick look, scanned over it, and I saw that they actually encourage you to take notes. Like they say, please have a piece of paper lying around and write down uh, names and make connections between who knows who. So that sounds pretty exciting because I love it when um, when you actually have to, to have some external stuff like a map on your on your table or a notebook or something. Anyway, let's just go. Um, let's just go. Okay, start game. Oh, I have no sound right now. Oh no, there's sound. <laughs> clicky, 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 click. Wow. The case. Oh wow, they introduced the whole thing with a wall of text. Your name is Tex Murphy, a private investigator in San Francisco. The year is 2033. That's not that far away anymore. And you've just been hired by a beautiful young lady named Sylvia to investigate the death of her father. Dr. Karl Linsky. Dr. Linsky was a prominent professor at the University of San Francisco and had been working on a secret project. Sylvia had asked him about his work several times, but he would not talk about it. Whew. And then a few days ago, he jumped or was pushed from the Golden Gate Bridge. The police are sure it was a routine suicide, but Sylvia thinks it was murder. Routine suicide ho sounds horrible. It sounds like a person could commit suicide several times. It's routine at this point. Your job is to solve the case. All right, well, that sounds good. Space to continue. Oh, you've been given $10,000 cash by your client and you have five leads. Please refer to the getting started section of the manual for a list of your leads and some important suggestions. Be sure to write things down, see, and be careful to spell correctly. When questioning suspects, use people's full names. Well, I've got I don't know if you can see this. I I did look into the um, into the uh, manual, and I think the um, the leads they're talking about um, are these. Oh, this is like a list of names and some 
codes that apparently are kind of location codes um, that will kind of help you to, to go to places. I mean, apparently to these people's homes or offices. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's my, my little notebook I have right here. Um, it's pretty cool. I really like that I have to keep like a notebook while playing a game. Uh, it's a long time I did this. I think the last time was Morrowind. Um, maybe Pass of Exile, but Pass of Exile it was more like to calculate stuff. Uh, and Morrowind is, it was really like to take notes. Um, so we're doing this again. Okay, exit. I, I hope I don't exit the game now. Oh, look at this. Help available by pressing H. Let's do that. Ah, okay, cool. Forward, reverse, turn left, right. Cursor left, right. Cursor up, down. All stop, space, all stop, all stop. We're just uh, hover up, down. Okay, so apparently hover and, and pitch up, down, it seems like this is not a regular car, right? Makes sense. It's the future, so apparently it's like a flying car. Okay. Um, hover. Let's hover up. Yep. We're hovering. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the map, actually. Is that like a red horizon? Like a red sun? Okay. So, um, I think what we have to do, actually, is to go to one of those leads. Um, now, the guy who died was Karlinski, and that's the first one on the list. Um, so I guess we can just check out his apartment or whatever. Um, now let's see, incoming fax. <laughs> like, you have a flying car, but then you have a fax machine, instead of like email or whatever. From Vanessa. Vanessa is... I don't know who that is. Um, here's that article on Linsky's death. A noted professor found dead. Prominent University of San Francisco professor Karl Linsky has found... Uh, was found... It's hard to read when the font is like was found dead early Sunday in what police are calling a suicide. Calling a suicide. Uh, West Precinct Detective Steve Clements said a witness saw Linsky jump from the Golden Gate Bridge about 11.20 last night. A suicide note has uh, was also found at his home address, uh, his home address to his daughter, Sylvia. Okay, so fax machines will come back, trust me. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, we still use fax machines in our company. Actually, uh, it, it's it's kind of a it's kind of crazy to be honest, um, because they they seem so outdated. But a lot of companies we we deal with they use fax machines, so we have to accept their faxes. Okay, so he wrote a suicide note to his daughter, which means obviously we got to talk to the daughter about this. And um, right, I think that's that's all we we can get from this note so far. Um, oh, wait a second, I should write down the name of this um, detective, maybe. Maybe I can talk to the detective. Let's just write down the name. I, I don't know, maybe it's bullshit, but let's write it down anyway. Um, so the name of the guy is Steve Clements. You know what? I have a feeling I already have that name written down. I should check. Yes, I do. <laughs> Now I have it twice. Okay. Cool. How do I get out of this screen? Escape? No. Space? Space. Another fax? Another fax. Oh no, it's the second page. Linsky's fiancée, Dolores Lightbody, I do have that name written down, indicated the professor had been under a great deal of stress and had taken a leave of absence from his teaching duties at the university. Funeral services will be 10... Wednesday, September 24th, at the All Saints Church. Should we write down All Saints Church? I'm just going to do it, because why not? All Saints Church. If I write down too much, well, can't really hurt. Okay, so his fiancé, Dolores Lightbody. Lightbody is a cool name. Lightbody. You would expect someone rather lightweight. Escape to exit. Oh, thank you. Thank you, game. Okay, so we're hovering. Uh, I hope we have enough uh, fuel not to fall down to the ground eventually. Now, let's let's just give this a try. Okay. Can I can go left and right. Um, so now I know from the manual that if I hit N, that's the navigation system, and I can put in um, a number, enough code, which, you know, those are the ones I was talking about. That's, that's what I got from the manual. 
Uh, what drink do you have there? I am drinking iced coffee uh, with uh, soy milk. So it's instant coffee, by the way. Works for me. So we want to go to Karlinski's office or his home. I don't know if it's home office. I didn't write that down. So that's the uh, number 4663. Destination locked. So cool. Okay, so now we can see in the blue number in the top left, we can see the distance. I completely forgot all the other controls. Um, the manual explains all of them. Uh, alt is pretty much self explanatory. It must be altitude, um, which is probably not in meters, but probably in feet, I guess. I have no idea. But so we can actually just start flying, I guess, and see if we can get closer to the, um, to the destination. And if that doesn't work, we can always um, use the autopilot. So plus is... Um, okay, so we're getting further away right now. Oh, oh, oh. So, still getting further away. I'm just trying to figure out where that is by... Oh boy, I think I should go slower. I'm getting really far away now. Oh, wait. It's getting... Oh, that looked good. Nope. Yep. Yeah, nope. Yes, we're getting closer. Let's try. Let's try to actually manually fly there at least one time, and then we can use the autopilot if that doesn't work out. Oh no, we're getting further away. Oh no, further away again. Oh boy. Oh boy, I have no idea. So where can I see, like, the heading? I, I need to know where to actually head. You know what? Autopilot it is. <laughs> Let's just use the autopilot. Uh, so, a autopilot engaged. I'm, I'm checking the controls right now, trying to figure out where do you see what the right heading is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Ah, I think right above the joystick, maybe? Right above the joystick, there's like this red, white flashing line. That might be the way. Can I just turn off the autopilot right now? Let's actually give that yes. That's the one. Okay, 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 okay. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so this means now I need to go left. All right. A anyway, I thought I knew how it works. Let's turn the autopilot back on. <laughs> it's the future. We can afford to use the autopilot. <laughs> autopilot engaged. <laughs> So we're 0 0.5 miles away. Ooh, 0.1 mile. Okay. Seems like we're pretty much there. I wonder if it's going down by itself or do I need to. No, it's going down. It's doing everything by itself. Graphics are beautiful. Landing pad contact to exit speeder. Pre press E. Exit. Okay. I did press E, but nothing's happening. Now. University of San Francisco. The instructor's offices at the University of San Francisco are small cubicles attached to the main classroom areas. I walk down the corridor and find the door with Professor Linsky's name on it. I try the door, but it's locked. I pull out my private detective all-purpose door opening kit and quickly pop it open. I scan the office, but it looks like no one has been here for quite some time. There are miscellaneous notes on the desk and textbooks in a bookcase on the wall. I examine the notes, but they don't strike me as important to the case. An additional 5 to 10 minutes of searching produces... Nothing. <laughs> I can use nothing else to see or do at this location. Wow. That was totally worth it. I thought we can actually look around the office ourselves. The manual kind of said investigate every place like really thoroughly. So I thought we can actually like walk around, but um, so far it seems more text based actually, which is also fine. Um, so then let's visit Sylvia, uh, his daughter, because apparently she should know something about the suicide note. So N for navigation, N to punch in the nav code, 4421 is Sylvia Linsky, the daughter of the dead professor. Should I use the autopilot? What do you think, autopilot or manual pilot? I'll give it one more try. 
the manual one. So, oh, I can actually use WASD apparently. Oh no, I can't. I thought I could, but I can't. Oh no, the autopilot's on, that's why. Turn it off. Turn it off! I'm going to fly myself. I can do it. So now, plus is to, um, to speed up. Which, I have a German keyboard, so I'm not exactly sure if I'm pushing the right button, but I think I am. We are pretty fast anyway. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one miles. Time to slow down. Oh, oh, oh! I went too far. I went too far. Okay, the engine sound tells me we're slowing down, and we're going backwards. Yes, we are. Okay, let's try to <laughs> to hit the sweet spot. Not easy. Okay, okay. Almost. Let's go down already. Um, ah, there's like the all stop kind of uh, control. I remember now. There's an all stop control. Anyway, that's decent. Am I going down? Yes, I'm going down. I'm gonna just crash somewhere. Can I die when I like not hit the landing? I probably can, right? Forward a bit. Look at this. 0.4 miles. Point 0.1 mile. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, I landed somewhere. <coughs> Autopilot. <laughs> it's more like a flight simulator so far. What's the autopilot doing? I was like 0.2 miles away and now we're like 2 miles away. By the way, can my car just fly, or is it still a car? C can it actually drive? I, I remember we saw it in the very beginning, it looked like a bullet. Okay, Mr. Autopilot, I think we can go down now. The land looks quite sad. There doesn't seem to be anything there. Let's get out of this flying car. Oh look, those cars, they do have wheels for sure. The bell chimed inside and after a moment Sylvia opened the door. She wore a pale blue blouse and white shorts that were short enough to be friendly. <laughs> she was as beautiful as ever with her soft blonde hair and clear blue eyes. I knew I was starting to fall for her. He's a quick guy. Careful, I reminded myself. She's a client, and falling for a client is dangerous in my business. So, oh, there's a picture actually. Whoa, did she just like lick, <laughs> lick her lips? <laughs> Still, if only I knew how she felt for me. This is um, this is turning from a flight simulator into like a Roman simulator. Real quick question. Yes, I'm gonna ask a question. Do I hit enter or space? Let's try space. No, nope. enter, enter. Tell me about. There we go. Now we. Say, tell me about Karl Linsky. He was happy at USF NC4663. Ah, so that's location code. Um, navigation code, I think, NC. Then he took a leave of absence to do some consulting work, and his whole personality changed. He was more relaxed because he took a leave, I guess. I'm sure he was in some sort of trouble. Because of this, I don't believe he committed suicide. Exclamation mark, dot. I've lost both my father and the insurance money. Hopefully can sh uh, she can still pay me. And I'm going to find out why. If you need to look through his apartment, it's located at NC4660. Well, ah, 4660 is his apartment, so we were at the office. But now we got the 4660. 
Okay, that's good. Um, bribe. I can bribe her? What will happen? Will she lick her lip again? <laughs> threaten? I can also threaten her. Wow. I mean, I don't really want to do any of those things because she's my client. Okay, can I question her about something else? Tell me about um, suicide note. Does that work? Or can I only use the... Sorry, I can't help you. Okay. Um, tell me about... Maybe I can ask her about herself, actually. Sylvia Minsky. Yes. My past has been a little wild, Tex. I can tell. I just have this thing about men. <laughs> but I think a man like you would be enough to settle me down. Whoa. Okay. Maybe when this case is over, you and I could explore that possibility. I see potential for a second part already. And we do have seven, so... So I'm not going to bribe or threaten her because I don't really see any any reason. Um, I wonder if she's more worried about the dad or the insurance money. Can we question her about something else? Yes, the detective. Let's ask her about the detective whose name was Steve Clements. I don't care what he thinks. My father did not commit suicide. Okay. That's what they always say. Anything else? Uh, let's ask about Dolores, obviously. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to ask her about all of these options because it's only five. Um, life buddy. Dolores and my father had talked about getting married. I always felt she had seduced him by black magic. By black magic. Okay, because there was no other way my father would have fallen for a woman like her. Is this something they say, like by black magic, meaning like she just did some shady stuff, or is this actually, is she actually convinced there's some black magic going on? I don't know, it's a sci-fi world. I mean, there might be black magic actually in this world. I don't know that yet. All I know is we're in 2033 and my car is able to fly. So and cars still have wheels, so I know. Anyway, um, let's ask her about people I don't actually know, which would be, there's only one person left, and that's John Richards. I don't know who that is, but he was in the manual. Um, bit weird to ask about that. What happened so far? Um, not much, I'm a detective in the year 2033. I have a flying car, which I can actually um, uh, navigate myself which is pretty hard, so I'm using the autopilot, which is also available by the press of a button, uh, as you would expect from the year 2033. Uh, um, the case is there's a guy, a university professor, who uh, killed himself after he took a break or during his break. Um, he like he took, took a leave, he was like, I, I cannot do this anymore or whatever. Um, and then during his break or after the break, I don't know, he killed himself, uh, apparently killed himself. Um, because uh, the daughter, which is the one you see on the screen, Sylvia, thinks he did not kill himself. She thinks, uh, she thinks it was like murder or whatever. So that's why she hired me. Um, I know from the manual of the game that I'm like a private detective. So I'm not police, I'm, I'm a private detective. The police thinks it was suicide. Uh, and they say there was a witness. Right, John Richards is probably the witness. Let's figure it out. So I'm questioning her and now the, the daughter of the dead professor. Sorry, can't help you there. All right, did I did I misspell that? Because that would be the um. I don't think I did. Richards. No, that that that's spelled correctly, I think. Okay, so we can always come back and ask her again. So for now, I would say, um, exit. Okay, so we're not really any smaller now. So this is our cool uh, future car, Mr. Bakchik. Um. So we're going to navigate N, this is like our onboard navigation, and we can punch in a navigation code. And the navigation codes I have here, uh, you you get five of these navigation codes from the manual of the game, actually. Uh, and, and the game actually tells you to look into the manual and, and like copy them or have them available. And then we just got 
an additional navigation code now from the daughter this is like the most important part of information i think which is the um, 4660 which apparently is the home address of the dead professor so that's um who goes by the name carl linsky it's a funny name carl linsky it sounds like kalinsky no like one name kalinsky Anyway, so I punched in the address and we can see in the top left corner that it's 73.12 miles away. And I'm going to it off for autopilot because I tried my hand at flying this thing manually two times. And I'm not a good pilot. So let's enjoy the autopilot. Uh, the thing gets really fast, so 70 miles sounds a lot, but as you can see now, we already got 10 miles down, 20 miles down. So Okay, 70 miles, pff, nothing. What is 70 miles if you have a flying car? I wonder what all the other controls are, by the way. I should probably look into the manual. I will do this when, when I stop playing today, and I will actually check the manual again and, and check what other controls we have so I, I understand it better. This is like basically the landing procedure takes longer than the actual traveling the, di the, the, the distance. You can see the, the altitude, uh, which is quite high right now, 11k of whatever, 11k bananas probably, <laughs> um, and it should um, descend in a second now. It's really funny, I, I think the landing takes like twice as long as the actual like, getting the distance behind you. And now we're going down. I like how the, the car on the altitude meter looks just like a hat. Or could be anything really. Could be a bird. Slug. <laughs> anything. Landing pad contact. To exit speed up press E. Let's get out. The three-story Queen Anne style home of Professor Karl Linsky, or as I call him Kalinsky, has been well kept. I step inside and notice the quaint style of furniture and decor. Finally! See, this is what I was hoping for. That looks cool. Oh, I keep putting my hands on WASD out of a habit, um, but I really shouldn't because um, D, for example, is to, to, um, to... D stands for disc, which is like save a game and stuff, so I need to like focus on the... Oh. Wow. Listen to... What kind of shoes is this guy wearing? Listen to it. Like, <laughs> those are some crazy heels. <laughs> wow. Okay, so let's investigate this apartment. Press enter to look, get, uh, to look, get, move, open, on, off, test, back. Um, this seems like I'm right in the middle of nowhere. Let's press enter. Couch. Couch. Look at the couch. Yes, the couch is an antique 1960s contemporary style. 1960s style. It's not really from the 1960s because that would be quite old in the year 2033. Um, okay, can I get the couch actually? Let's try. It's crazy, but it is too awkward to carry around and it won't fit in the trunk. Yes, I agree. Uh, can I move the couch to see if he dropped something underneath? That makes sense. Do you want to hurt your back? No, I don't want to hurt my back. No, I don't. But moving a couch is actually not that hard. Uh, open the couch. Sounds weird, but maybe we do have a knife and can actually like... We shouldn't, but let's see how crazy this guy is. It doesn't seem to want to open, right? Well, unless you use a knife. Uh, ta <laughs> taste, <laughs> taste the couch. Why not? Yuck! Obviously, you're not a gourmet. I know I'm not. I'm actually not. Uh, I really don't care too much about great taste. Okay. Uh, we can also reach the coffee table. Look at the coffee table. There's a lot of stuff. The coffee table is made of brushed aluminum. That's brushed aluminum? That looks brown to me, which would indicate wood. Okay, but I'll believe him. Um, now, on the coffee table, there's a chess set, and I'm not sure how I can actually go over to the um, to the chess set with my cursor, because left and right cursor goes through all of these options. And... Um, I will just say, what does on-off mean? 
your suggestion <laughs> sounds a bit demented. <laughs> wow. I just got insulted by Tex Murphy. Who is I? I am Tex Murphy. Taste the taste the coffee table. Yeah, for this I'm going to make him lick the table. I'm sure you know what you're doing, even though you look like an idiot doing this. <laughs> Don't you love how these old games really like did not have a problem insulting you? I'm sure some recent games do this as well, but I haven't played any that did. Um, okay, I want to kind of get to the chest set in the note, especially the note, obviously, but how can I do it? I don't know, sadly. Um, wait, maybe if I say back, coffee table, and then press enter. No. I'll have to look into the um, to the manual, I think. Wait, let me see if I have it on my notes, actually. Um, inventory, nope, it's not going to help me. No, I don't have it in my notes, actually, which means I didn't see it in the manual when I scanned through it, so let's just try. So, um, ask Carl's daughter, she might lick it. <laughs> she might actually lick it. I mean, she's licking everything. I mean, so far I've only seen her lick her upper lip, but, you know, that indicates something. The coffee table is made out, yeah, okay, so now I would like to get over to the, um, to the chest set. How do I do it? Wait, let's try some other buttons. Plus? Minus, no, up, down is obviously... Oh, up, down! Up, down works, cool. Um, chest set, look at the chest set. The chest board is set up with all the pieces except one. A bishop is missing. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but it must be important. I'm a good detective, so I'm just going to write down bishop. In a minute, I'm not going to remember what I was trying to tell myself with bishop. But let's write it down anyway. Um, get the chest, no, I don't want to, maybe we can open the chest set if it's one of those box things, no, there's nothing to open, okay, um, note, the note is obviously the most interesting thing, look at the note, the handwritten note says, I'm going to get you for failing me, Linsky, okay, so the plot thickens apparently, I'm going to get you, could very well mean, I'm gonna end you, um, so who wrote that note? That's the question. We don't know. Uh, get that note. We'll take that with us. Okay. Finally, he agrees with me. Um, I should have asked him to lick the note before I <laughs> told him to get the note. Maybe he would have done it. Okay, we have the note. The note's still on the table, though. I wonder if, if the environment is just not that interactive. Probably. I, I guess I have it. Um, Okay, so let's get back. The coffee table is not interesting anymore. And let's check the plant. There's two plants I can see. I wonder which of those plants is the one he's actually um, talking about. But press enter. Ooh, I'm sorry. Press enter. Plant. A miniature palm tree mutation is set in the corner. A mutated palm tree. What does it mean? Why is it mutated? Did the professor conduct some experiments? I don't know. Get the palm tree, why not? It is too awkward to carry around. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Um, open the palm tree. I really don't see any for that. Yeah, me neither, but I thought we should try. Taste the palm tree, however. I'm not even going Yes, let's try. Obviously, <laughs> you don't look at me. Okay. Yeah, I can I can slice the couch into small pieces and then you can have some. Okay, let's move. So there's a cupboard here. Cabinet, yes. Look at the cabinet, solid oak cabinet. So that's oak and it has approximately the same color color as the um, coffee table, yet the coffee table is aluminum. Let's uh, always remember that. Um, open the cabinet. I think this makes a lot of sense. It doesn't seem to want to open. However, I do have a cabinet door option here. Um, how did I... There we go. Open the cabinet door, maybe? Okay. C cabinet key. I open the cabinet and find a cabinet key. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, but let's take that for sure. Let's look at it first. File cabinet key. Ah, file cabinet key. Okay, so it's a different cabinet. That makes a lot more sense. Let's get the key. Okay. <laughs> I wish they would have put some more affirmative messages in there instead of just okay. You know, like, sure, I'll do it, or great, yeah, why not? Um, so there's a book. Uh, there's a book. 
look at the book first. Psychology textbook written by Karl Linsky. Karl Linsky. A page is marked. A page is marked. Can I somehow, like, I would like to know what's on the page. Um, open the book. Open the book. You open the book to the page marked and see what appears to be a combination to a safe. Great. Ah, and now it appears here. Combination. Open. No. Look. The safe combination is... Good that I have my pen handy. 37... 3... 1... 6. How inconsistent I am. 37 and then 1... 6. Okay. Thank you for that combination. Should we get the book? Um, let's get the book just in case. I mean, I don't know if we have like a limit on how much we can carry. Okay. Cool. We've got the book. Um, then let's close the cabinet door. It's already open. Okay, we cannot close it, apparently. Um, can we close the cabinet? I mean, we have no close option, but I thought it's kind of a trigger that goes like it's open, then open will close. It doesn't seem to want to open. Okay, back, 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 back. Painting. Let's look at the painting as well. Uh, look at the painting. Solid. Oh, I looked at the um, cabinet again. Painting. There we go. Look at the painting. The painting is an, is an antique landscape. People used to buy these at Kmart. Used to. Don't anymore. It's a nice painting, actually. I would hang that on my wall. Like this very one, scaled up to have all the pixels. Why not? I like pixel, pixel art. Um, should I get the painting? No, why would I? But there might be something on the, on the back side. So actually, let's get it hoping that he will take it on. You don't have the tools or the time to remove it. Wow. I have the time. Excuse me. Um, can we, what does on off mean? Is it like, I think it's switching something on and off, but maybe it's also taking it off, taking it off the one. Art should turn you on, <laughs> not vice versa. Nice. Um, taste the painting, do it. Art is a matter of taste, isn't it? Does it mean he's tasting it? No. Okay. I want him to lick something, I don't know. Uh, Sylvia licked her, her, uh, her lips. I want text to lick something as well. Okay, um, let's walk further. So, obviously, there's a cabinet here. Uh, and a chair display, display case. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, what does he have in the display case? The display cabinet is protected by a magnetic field. Oh, wow. You notice two slot screws partially hidden and surmise that you could shut down the field if you had a slot screwdriver. Well, let's find a screwdriver, I guess. Um, and there's a statue in the case, apparently. Look at that. Inside the case is the historical artifact, the Maltese fruitcake. Carbon dated as the oldest fruitcake in existence. It dates back to the 16th century Europe. Nobody wanted to eat it then either. Value four thousand dollars. I wonder how much four thousand dollars is, you know, going back because it's two thousand thirty-three. So inf uh, inflation and everything. Okay. Fruitcake statue. I don't think that has relevance for a case, though. Who knows? I wonder. This guy came in and you know and wrote a note saying like, "I'll get you." So apparently there was some beef, uh, and then he didn't actually um, steal the fruitcake because of a magnetic field that could be disabled by loosening two screws. Instead, he just stole the bishop. Ma maybe stole the bishop. Anyway, um, thank you for this display case. Chair. I don't think anything could be interesting about the chair, but um, let's look at the chair. Executive swivel chair. Yeah, he, uh, he agrees. Let's move the chair. Okay. Do I need to, like... Okay, so he's, he just, okay, we have a desk key, get the desk key, okay. Um, display case, trash can, we definitely should check the trash can, is this too awkward to carry? Oh, I, I said get, I wanted to say look. A trash can sits on the floor next to the desk. And there's a note and a lease, uh, let's look at the lease. The lease is for space in the Bridgeview Warehouse, located in San Francisco, 4675. We've got a new location um, and I should have made a different type of note here but uh, so that is the 
bridge view warehouse four six seven five cool it was rented by Karl Linsky ten months ago what did you do with that warehouse Kalinsky? we don't know let's check out the note the note is a handwritten letter to Dolores Lightbody which is his um, uh, not wife but what do you say fiance it says Dolores I'm calling our relationship off definitely not married it has nothing to do with Sandra Larson writing that down Sandra and I have a feeling it has everything to do with Sandra Larson Sandra Larson I'm going to make an exclamation mark next to Sandra Larson um, I just know there are other whales in the sea <laughs> The whales in the sea. Wow. Uh, and I. Oh. Is that all that the note says, or should I hit a, have hit a different button? No, that's all. That's all. And I dot 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 dot. So he never finished the note. So he wanted to write the note, and then was like, "Fuck it." Okay, Dolores. We need to talk to Dolores, and we need to talk to Sandra Larson. Um. Who both seem to be whales, apparently, according to Kalinsky. I can see the whales now. Okay. What else do we get? Back. What do we have? Um, desk. Let's check the desk. Uh, oops. Look, desk. Brushed aluminum work desk. Again, brushed aluminum, and in this case, I do believe it because it does look like metal. Um, there's a drawer. Let's check the drawer. Desk side drawer. Open the drawer, please, Mr. Tex. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, he opened only one side, by the way. If you want to be thorough, you should open both sides. Digital tape. Ooh. Um, let's look at the digital tape. A two-inch digital audio tape. Can we um, can we somehow use that audio tape? Well, I'll just take it with me for now. Okay. And we also have a grade sheet. The grade sheet is for an advanced psychology course. He has a psychology book. The name of one student is circled Blaise Wiener. Um, Blaise Wiener. Student. Okay. The grade received is an E. I'm not too familiar with the uh, US grading system, but as far as I know, A is the best, and then it goes down. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and I think they have the same grading system as we have in Germany in that there's six possible grades, which means um, F would be the worst. So E is pretty bad, pretty bad. Okay. So um, Kalinsky was uh, apparently teaching psychology. As well, what was his? I forgot his occupation. To be honest, um, they told us in the very beginning, and I actually forgot. Maybe he, he was a psychology um, professor. Um, okay, back, back. Digital tape player. Ah, there's a digital tape player. How convenient is that? Uh, press enter. Um, nope. Digital tape player um, on off. Let's let's turn it on. I don't know how to put the tape in, but maybe you, you slip the tape you found in the desk into the tape player. Thank you. Um, the voice on the tape cries out, "They're in my head. They're in my head." Ooh, that doesn't sound too good. They're in my head. They're in my head. That sounds even worse than I imagined it. I got a legitimate shock right now. I didn't expect that loud voice at all. The, the game was very silent apart from our footsteps. Clong, clong. And now we have that screaming. I hope you're all awake now. Taste the tape player, please. For <laughs> for a major appliance, its flavor is about average. He did taste the tape player. Thank you, Tex. I like you. Okay. Uh, is there anything else? Wait, maybe the list goes on? No. Okay. Back. Um, did I miss something? I might have missed something. Tell me if so. Do we have something else here? Nope. Let's go down to these three plants. Okay, that was 
both seem to be the same plants. By the way, there's like some kind of metal ball on the coffee table, and he didn't say anything about it. Can we see it from here, maybe? Um, no, just a chess set. Should we take the chess set? I don't think we should. It appears to be securely fastened down. Who fastens down their chess game to their table? That seems very inconvenient. If you want to like use the table for something else. Okay. Booze. Let's go over to the booze. So let's see if uh, he has some good taste. Bar whiskey. He does have some good taste. Professor. Very well. Um, whiskey. Look at the whiskey. Um, the Jack Daniels whiskey. Some might argue it's too mainstream. I would say it's perfectly fine. Jack Daniels is half full. Um, well, I think we can finally put that taste option to good use. Let's do this right away. I'll open first, open the bottle. If you try to lick the cap, that's not going to do anything. Okay. Okay. I would have thought you would be a bit more enthusiastic about it, opening a bottle of Jack Daniels. Okay, it's doing the trick though. Taste the Jack Daniels, please. You lift the bottle to your lips and remember your promise not to drink while on the case. Oops, well, my car has au uh, the autopilot, so I don't see the issue. What the hell, <laughs> you say, and pour the entire contents down your throat. The entire contents? He, he just said the bottle was half empty, and this means we are definitely drunk now. I mean, I don't know about your tolerance, but I'm definitely drunk after half a bottle, at least if I down it in just one go. Well, there. Text drunk Murphy. Um, <laughs> whiskey's still there, but can we get the empty bottle? We might need need to, you know, smash someone over the head. Okay, yeah, we got the bottle. Great. Uh, look at the bar. The bar appears to be well stocked. There's a cabinet door. And we do have a cabinet key, if I remember. Ah, that was for the file cabinet door, right? Um, bar door. Bar door. Look at the bar door. Cabinet door to the bar. Open. Please. Okay. He always says okay. It's a bit boring, to be honest. Shoebox. Look at the shoebox first. A small shoebox is inside the cabinet. Open it. We're not the police. We, uh, we just do what we want. Okay. Papers. Look at them papers. Professor, I got the possible Nexus passwords to be decoded. ISBPHO. You okay? I'm not going to read them all, but Lazentov is quite, quite nice, though. No? Gnop. Um, <laughs> it's a helmet. Mm. Oh, I'll be in touch as if. Um, should we write down all of these? I mean, that takes a while, but um, I have a feeling in this game we probably should. Let, let me try to, to to jot them down real quick, okay? Though we can probably take the note with us, and then we can probably look at it again, I guess. Um, but you know, better safe than sorry. Uh, I don't want to like mess up, and then be like, no, why did I not write down those passwords? I'm already at Gnob, so um, I think we're we're good. Uh, Nick, uh, Orc, Orc. Um, what do I have? Number. Oh no, now we get to the long ones. Uh, Eket Mac. <laughs> Bimgati. No, it's actually B M G T A I. And we have Etza Elmat. Yeah, we can probably look at the note, right? I'm probably doing a stupid thing right here. And we have Niktg. And we have Kubak. And we have TV. Okay, cool. I'll be in touch. SF. Wait, SF. Let me write down that SF said this. Uh, San Francisco. Do we have someone on the list who goes by the initials of SF? Steve Clements? No. Sylvia Linsky? No. And what about the other two? Sandra Lars? No. No, we don't have anyone. So there's a mysterious person going by the initials SF. Okay, uh, let's take the note if we can. Okay, cool. Should we also take the shoe box? It does fit in the trunk. Tax. I really don't see a need for that. 
Yeah, I don't see a need for that, but you know, you never know in these games. Okay, um, taste the shoebox. <laughs> While it's high in fiber, that hardly compensates for lack of taste. See, now that he had a bottle of Jack, he's okay to lick anything. So we could probably lick the couch as well. Um, back, back. So there's a the bookshelf. Let's check the bookshelf. Oh, press enter, bar. No, we already got the bar. Thank you. Bookshelf, bookshelf. And also there's a picture of someone. I wonder if that the pi is the professor. Oh, we don't have any options to, to check anything here, actually. Uh, this is the bar, or is there... Oh, okay, I thought there was something on the bar, so... Now we have a fax machine. Switch. What does the switch do? Let's definitely use the switch. Okay. The light went on. Oh, uh, which... It's funny, because even in this low resolution, it looks like there's, like, kind of wings coming out to the left and right of the uh, light. I don't know if that's on purpose, or that's just me. <laughs> okay, um, cabinet. Open the cabinet, for sure. It doesn't seem to want to open. So we found one cabinet key in a cabinet, which was for the file cabinet, and we found another key on the desk, actually, if I remember correctly, and I actually forgot what kind of name this key had, like, what was it for, but we did open the, the bar as well, so it, the key might as, uh, have been for that. Um, anyway, we don't have another key. This doesn't open, so we'll have to come back, I guess. Bookcase. Let's look at the bookcase. You scan the bookcase and nothing seems out of the ordinary. Fair enough. Can we move the bookcase? Uh, I know, I know his bag, but he did have a bottle of Jack, half a bottle. You get a firm grip and tuck as hard as you can. You couldn't move this if your life depended on it. But look at this. That's what half a bottle of Jack does to you. Before moving the couch, I don't know, man, my bag. Now he had the bottle of Jack and suddenly he's like, yeah, sure, I'm going to move this bookshelf. He can't though, but he tried. Facts, look at the facts. The fax machine is operational. Um, and there's a message. Dear Professor, looking forward to our date Saturday, love, Sandra Larson. So he, she does um, address him as Professor, so it would seem their relationship isn't too close yet, but maybe she just wants to make sure that no one else uh, you know, who might read the facts, um, would get the wrong idea. Um, I mean, after all, she says love, Sandra Larson. Uh, let's get this. That's evident. Uh, evidence. Um, okay, I think we're through with this room, and I'm going to have a quick beep beep. Be right back. You can actually not see me, but you can actually hear me because I do have a wireless headset, which is absolutely amazing. But there is an obvious implication, and that implication is when you do have a wireless headset, you tend to not take it off ever. Um, and what I can do is I can just flip up my microphone like this. And that mutes the microphone, uh, which is really cool. Um, so when I go to the toilet with my headset on, <laughs> I mute my microphone. However, if 
I should continue with this streaming thing. It's just bound to happen that eventually <laughs> I will go to toilet and forget about that. And then um, the whole internet can enjoy the splashing sounds of, you know. But today is not that day. I hope. Okay. Um, so are we through with this room? Did did you guys, if you if you happen to watch, I don't know, is there anything else I I have forgot forgotten in this room that I should check? I don't think so. But let me know. Um, let me have one more stroll around. Let's see if we can maybe advance the screen. Maybe it like scrolls if we move further. I do not think so. No, man, he walks. He he definitely walks as if he should go to toilet. By the way, and what's that step sound? That's amazing. Okay, uh, exit. Yes, no. Yes. So we do have a lot of um, places to visit. Actually, uh, we do have. Um, we could actually go back to Sylvia right now and ask her about uh, Sandra Larson and Blaze Wiener. Um, but we've just talked to her, so I don't think we should do that right now. I would say let's actually check out the warehouse. Warehouse it is. Um, N for navigation, yes, N to punch in the code. 4675 for the warehouse. Destination locked and autopilot engaged. Sit back and enjoy. Uh, how far is that? Four miles. That doesn't take long, but I will use the time to get a refill. Save the game. Let's definitely save the game. Oh, we cannot save the game. Oh, damn it. I have not saved the game yet. I don't know how to shoot. Right I didn't know I was on the left side because I was outside of the screen actually. So I do not have unlimited ammunition apparently. So oh, I need to move through. I didn't know I can move. Let's move quickly. I can shoot when I'm crouching. Guys. Oh, oh shit. This is actually quite hard. Damn it. Oh damn it. Oh damn it. I might die here. Let's not die. That's strange. Like the closer you get the less time you have to actually dodge the Bullets. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, shit. Oh, no, another screen. 
And the, the save button does not work in this screen. I'm sweating. I'm excited. I don't want to die. I don't want to die because then I need to start all over. I mean, we haven't done that much, but... After all, it would be annoying. I wonder if I can run, but I don't know. <sighs> holy moly, that was quite exciting to be honest. I did not expect that because we didn't have any like gunfights yet. I did not know what the buttons were, um, and then you know, text was just off to the left side of the screen, and I didn't even realize what was going on. I thought the game bugged out. Wow, and then I almost died apparently. So whew. I stepped from the fox shrouded street into the warehouse that Linsky rented. It's an old brick building located near the docks. The smell of the ocean has been absorbed into the wooden beams and walls. That sounds nice, actually. And the atmosphere is heavy and damp. The floor is cement, and every time I take a step, <laughs> the whole area re reverberates. Do I say that correctly? It's dark inside, the only lighting being a panel of frosted glass windows up near the roof line. I can barely make out what appears to be a small area closed off from the rest of the building. I walk over and check it out. Okay, let's hope there's not any more shooting going on because I think we're down to like what five percent of our health points <sighs> let's get ready here we go oh thank god okay let's save right here D should be the button to save but maybe it only works from our car because I know that a lot of these options are only available when you're in the car let me check D is yeah, D is for save and it does not work so apparently so let's hope that when we get out, we do need do not need to shoot our way out because then we might as well die. Um, okay, press enter. Forklift, bat trap, rat trap, <laughs> uh, and crates. <laughs> a bat trap would be cool as well. Um, let's check out the forklift. Look, the forklift is old and appears to be in poor condition. Uh, that doesn't mean that it doesn't work. So let's see if it works. I mean. I don't even know if I want to move something, but let's just see if it works or not. You attempt to start a forklift, but nothing happens. Okay, we might have to fix it. Or we just don't need it. Uh, the rat trap. Look at the rat trap. Uh, is there something inside? A large rat trap looks well used. Where is it, by the way? Ah, right at the entrance. I see it now. Um, should we get it? No, I really don't want to. And we definitely shouldn't taste it, even after a bottle of Jackie. Um, get the rat trap, though. I don't know. Okay. Okay, we actually took the red trap. A well-used one, this one. Um, wonder if there's still cheese. Ah, and now I can clearly see that this game has no interactive environment in that um, he did not actually move the red trap from the environment, e even though we took it. Um, so, yeah. We just have to know what we took. Uh, look at the crates. Uh, large crates sit on the floor. One crate has an uneven hole near the floor. Well, that could be a red. Um, well, look at the hole. The hole is small and appears to have been jag jaggedly cut, so that does not sound like a rat, actually. Um, can we, like, open that box? Open the hole. You try, but it just won't budge. I mean, let's try to open the crate instead of the, the hole. It doesn't seem to want to open. No, okay. Um, what if we say move the crate? Is he going to say we need the... Um, take a deep breath and <laughs> rethink that idea. Why? Because they're all going to fall down? Maybe. So, okay, what do we do about the hole in the crate, I wonder? Let's get out of this for now. Uh, oh, there's not more here. Let's walk around. So, what is this down here? It looks like a metal backpack of some sort. Machine. That's a machine, apparently. Okay. The large machine is called an alpha wave processor. What does that do? Alpha wave. I should have paid attention in physics, shouldn't I? Um, and more crates. You carefully examine the crates, but find nothing out of the ordinary. But then there's ammunition. Look. 100 rounds of ammunition. Perfect, because we just used some. Get it. Okay, cool. So ammunition, ammunition is nothing out of the ordinary, apparently. I mean, if I ever find ammunition just lying around, I would say that's out of the ordinary. But um, can we turn the machine on? I'm not sure we should turn it on, but... Okay. Okay. Um, nothing happens, apparently. Look at it now. The large machine is called... An okay, so still the same. Um, so we turn on the machine. Let's keep that in mind. 
I'm sure it has some effect on the world press. Uh, we have a newspaper. That's probably what's on the ground. I thought it was a metal grid, but it's apparently the newspaper. Oh, look at it. Article circled on the desk of noted scientist Carl Davis. Another name to write down. Carl Davis, and then I will write down he's dead and he's a scientist. It's interesting to note, by the way, that we do have like an alpha wave processor or whatever in this warehouse. So apparently they did set up some kind of secret scientific laboratory or whatever. Caused by an accident in his lab. Well, I sure hope it didn't have anything to do with an alpha wave processor. Uh, alpha wave processor. <laughs> because if so, I may be dead in a second as well. Uh, look at the desk. Standard size office desk. I'm happy he didn't say it's aluminum. Fax machine. Another fax machine! Look at this! The year 2033. Fax machines are everywhere. The fax, ma fax machine is operational. Good. And there's a message in there. The message reads, Professor, they're on to you. I suggest you disappear fast. The name at the bottom of the fax machine is Sonny Fletcher. Uh, of the message, not ma uh, machine. Another one. Sonny... Fletcher uh, warned the professor is what I'm going to write down here because I completely forgot um, to write down like what kind of relationships people have uh, and the manual actually stated you should actually write down like who knows who and so on I did not do that I hope we will get by uh, warned the professor now here's the thing I, I wrote down warned the professor and I didn't write down warned um, Karlinski because we now have two professors right the dead professor Karlinski and then the dead professor who uh, performed some uh, experiments in his laboratory. Okay, can we take the note because this way I could, this way I can always go back and read it. Um, can can we look at the fax machine? No, we've got the message. Computer. <laughs> look, it's not even a flat screen. They didn't even, you know, think that far. Who can blame them? Um, oops. Look at the computer. The computer won't operate without a pass card. A pass card, not a password. Okay. Um, we can still try to turn it on and off. Yeah, but nothing happens. Okay. Look at the printer. A standard laser printer. Okay. No message, no nothing. Let's turn it on. Okay. Turn it on, nothing happens. All right. Make a guess, guys. What operating system is it on the computer? It has the a mint green background. Somehow that reminds me of Windows 2000. I think Windows 2000 had a mint big, uh, mint green background as a default, didn't it? But apparently this is not Windows 2000 because we're... Uh, I mean, the game is from 1989. Okay. Can we open the printer? We tried to pry it open, but it's no use. Can we open the computer? Okay. Oh, okay, but nothing happens. Can we move the computer? Okay. This is something that confuses me. You say move the computer, he says okay, and then there's like no feedback whatsoever. He doesn't say I moved the computer, but you know, it didn't have any use. Oh, anyway, can we get the computer? It can't be removed. Impossible. Okay. Now, there seems to be one more computer up here. Ledger. What's actually Ledger? I don't know. I need to quickly look that up. Heath. It's Heath Ledger, maybe. <laughs> uh, ah, okay. An account? Or or it could also be the, the beam. Wow, that didn't really help, but it's probably the, um, the, the account. Um, check the Ledger. Yeah, it's a, a, ah! <laughs> yeah, it, it's to do with an account because it says check ledger like check in like the bank check last deposit from MTC corporation which is a thing you can ask about and I completely forgot that when we talked to uh, Sylvia that you can not only ask about people but there's like a list of um, of actually like keywords that you can ask about you also need to to type it precisely like um, like the way it is in the manual this is my my list right here and MTC Corp is on there so we 
most definitely have to go back and talk to um, to uh, Sylvia. Okay, um, last check to Sonny Fletcher. Wait, we do have Sonny Fletcher on here somewhere, don't we? Sonny Fletcher is the guy who warned the professor. So, MTC Corporation is paying Sonny Fletcher, the guy who warned the professor. Okay, private investigator. Private investigator, which means he's in the same field as tax as us. Private investigator, okay. We should definitely talk to that guy if we can figure out where he is. Um, check the cabinet door, metal cabinet door is a round knob. Open it, go ahead, open it. Okay. Looks like a like a little m medicine cabinet actually. Pep oh yeah, and look at this, Pepto-Bismol, Band-Aid can, radiation belts. It's cool, they, they, they used, what is that, like 16 pixels, 17 pixels or whatever in height and, 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 and I don't know, 10 in width or something, and yet they can actually convey what kind of cabinet it is. It's pretty cool. I like this kind of minimalism where, you know, you, you, you manage to convey a message with such little information, actually. Um, even though, to be honest, I thought the newspaper was a metal grid, but, you know. Pepto-Bismol. Um, what is that, Pepto? Anyone know what that is? Pepto-Bismol? Pepto-Bismol. What is that? Painkillers, maybe? Because that would be like the obvious thing to have. Look, the bottle is half full. Again, half a bottle of um, Jack Daniels, half a bottle of painkillers. Well, get them. We will definitely use some painkillers, I'm pretty sure. Band aids, same goes for band aids. Johnson and Johnson assorted edible edible band aids. Okay. Um, shall we taste them? <laughs> no, let's just take them for now. You get the can of assorted bandage that contained a Nexus Pass card. Oh, so we can use the computer. Um, radiation pills. Radiation pills? Is that pills that help with radiation, protect you from radiation, or that actually r radiate you? The radiation pills have an expiration date of 2011. Whoops. They are a relic of an earlier area. Let's get him. Okay. Um, calendar. Let's look at the calendar. Picture of farm. <laughs> 2033. The date October 3, 2033 is circled. Word written above the date circled. Doomsday. Sounds like we should take a note. Doomsday. 3rd October. 2033. I didn't pay attention. What what date do we have actually? Like right now in the game, what date is it? It's 2033. I remember that much, but I don't not remember even what month it is. I don't even know if it told us. Hmm. I wonder if Tex has a smartphone so we can check. I don't think so, but maybe he has a mobile fax machine that he can lick whenever he wants to file cabinet. A standard black metal file cabinet. Okay, so that's a, to the, the one to the left, because there's also like the, the metal, um, light metal cabinet to the right. Um, there's a fan. Okay, look at the fan. A 16 inch circulation fan. Well, I can use that for my uh, computer case, so let's get it. It appears to be securely fastened down. Well, let's turn it on and see if it, like this fan hasn't worked for quite some time. Too bad. Okay, we have a file drawer. I looked at the file drawer and then it just like was gone. Open file cabinet. Doesn't seem to want to open. Wait, wait, wait a second. Where's my options? So look at the file cabinet. Standard black metal file cabinet. There we go. File drawer. Open it. I don't know what I did before, but somehow. Using the key found at L Linsky's home, you open the file cabinet drawer. That's a very almighty key. And there's a list in there. Whew. Look at the list. This is a death note. A list of scientists that may be working on Overlord. John Claus, Maurice Gribble, and David Pope. I need I need bigger paper, actually. Um, this is getting out of hand. Um, so, Overlord. 
we have one junk clause. Again, I can probably take this note and look at it again, um, but I think it also adds to the experience of the game to actually take notes. Maurice Gripple and David Pope. So those are all scientists. Lots of scientists in this game, or professors and scientists, who in my head always are in the same category because they're all very smart. Take the note. Thank you. Um, okay, so we have all of this. Let's go back. We check the desk, we check the ledger, the cabinet door, the calendar, and the file cabinet. So, should we take the calendar actually? It appears to be securely fastened down. Everything is securely fastened down. Chess games, calendars, even fans. All right. Now I want to see if we can also check this um, this one right here, this cabinet. Okay, that, that's one of them apparently. I mean, actually, not the cabinet door was the medicine cabinet, and the file cabinet was the black one. But I mean, apparently this. Um, so, should we try to fix this machine somehow? Well, I wouldn't know how, so... Anything I missed in here? Hopefully not. We got a rat trap in our pocket. And half a bottle of Jack Daniels and half a bottle of maybe painkillers. Okay, where do we go? I feel like going back to square one and talking to Sylvia again, because we do have a lot of new names to ask her about. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six, se seven or eight new names, actually. I, that's a lot. Let's go to, to that lady, to the daughter of Kalinsky, um, which I will now nickname Silinsky, Sylvia Linsky. 4421. Off we go to Silinski. Autopilot engaged. Legs. They never move, not even an inch. The Jackie got him all calmed down. The pixel art in the cockpit is actually not too beautiful, but the rooms, the rooms are kind of nice. Look at the detail on his legs, like the dithering, the, the dithering of the pixels. And then look at all the, yeah, like the, the whole, you know, cockpit itself. It seems to be a different kind of quality. Loading. Uh, we're back to Sylvia. Let's see if she licks her lip again. So we open the door. So the first one we ask about, obviously, is this other lady who might have something to do with the um, the parting of the two lovers. Um, so we have Sandra Larson. By the way, can I write in caps? Yeah, in in no, it's always caps. Okay. My father had taken her out several times. I was glad to see him with someone other than that pig, Dolores. When Dolores found out 
she was fit to be roasted. <laughs> what does it mean, being fit to be roasted? It's funny anyway. Um, okay. Let's also ask about the corporation, uh, the MTC Corp, with a dot. Very important to spell it correctly, the manual said several times. Sorry, I can't help you there. Or maybe it was MTC Corporation. MTC Corp without a dot, not crop. <laughs> Corp, no. Okay, she can't help us when it comes to MTC Corporation. Um, what about Overlord, though? No idea about Overlord. You have no idea about your dad's work. Oh, you know what? In the warehouse, the computer said you need a pass card. Then we found a pass card. Did not go back to the computer. We'll have to go back there. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the student with the uh, grade E? Which I should write down because I will otherwise forget that this was like a thing. Um, Blaze Wiener, which is a funny name. Can't help you. Wow, she doesn't know much. Um, what about the dead scientist? Going by the name of Carl Davis. Can't help you. Wow. Okay, then we have the um, the other private investigator, who uh, Sonny Fletcher, who apparently warned the um, dead scientist Carl Davis before he then died. Can't help you. Wow. Um, what about Steve Clemens? And see now, what happens is, I did write down Steve Clemens, didn't write down the context, forgot about it. But at least she can say something. I don't care what he thinks. My father didn't commit suicide. Wait, Steve Clemens, let me check my first page. That's the detective. That's the detective from the police who actually investigated the uh, suicide slash murder. Okay, so that was stupid of me. Um, we have more names though, because we have found the note of three scientists uh, who worked on the Overlord project, and one of those names was John Klaus. I remember him. He and my father were friends several years ago. They had a falling out over that mountain, Dolores. Okay. <laughs> falling out over the mountain. There's so many like phrases here that I don't really like. I'm not familiar with. So they had a falling out over that mountain, Dolores. I think they kind of had a fight over Dolores. Is that what it means? I hope it is. Then we have Maurice Dribble, scientist number two, working on Overlord. Can't help you. I'm always worried I had a typo, so I'm going to do it one more time. Maurice Dribble. No. Okay. And we had uh, David Pope, who's easy to spell. And she has no idea. Okay, so John Claus, um, you know what, I for the next time I will get a bigger paper and I will actually jot down all the names and then actually draw lines. For example, now we know that John Claus uh, knows uh, uh, our guy, Kalinsky. Um, so for now I'm just going to make a like a CL here, which is hopefully I kno still know tomorrow what it means. Okay. Tell me about now. Let's also, while we're here, because traveling takes a while, let's ask her about all of these things that the manual actually gives you and tells you, you know, like you should um, ask people about. So we have password. Like, that's a weird question. Like, password, give me the password. Sylvia, give it to me. Like, what password? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have law and order. I don't understand why you would ask someone about law and order, but here we go. I've heard the name. Okay, the name. So apparently this might be an organization. I thought Law and Order was just a, like an, how you refer to, for example, the police and you know all the jurisdiction. Um, but I don't know much about them. I'm not very political. Okay, a political party. I'm confused. Law and Order. Okay, then we have Nexus on here. She doesn't know. Then ah, of course, insurance. Well, that's you know I was wondering about the insurance thing because she mentioned the insurance if she would get her money back um so apparently it's like life insurance i would assume let's oh she's not talking about it maybe because i didn't spell it correctly exactly <laughs> what you're thinking i might have killed my father for the insurance money aren't you 
I'm not going to deny that I could use one million dollars, but I honestly believe that my father was murdered. And if he was, I'm entitled to the money. But if you investigate his death and you're convinced it is a suicide, I'll accept your findings. Wow, one million. One million dollars, that's a strong motive, for sure. Um, one million dollars, that, that would have a lot of people considering I mean, especially if it's just pushing someone, you know, let's say the professor was actually contemplating suicide and he was standing on the bridge and you come by and you're like, oh, you know, one million. I mean, obviously she, it would have to be her, but okay. Um, and we have two more. We have pass card, which we have found already. And we have enterprises. Let's make sure. Write this correctly. Can't help you there. I've got someone watching apart from there. I've got someone watching from behind, making jokes too. Um, okay, she doesn't know about Gideon Enterprises. And did I ask her about Overlord? Uh, I, I did, right? Yes, I did. Okay, so I think we asked her about pretty much everything, every single name. Uh, then again, I want to ask her about Doomsday. Um, in the in the office of the professor on the calendar the 3rd of october of 2033 was marked as the doomsday uh, which is um pretty epic but she has no idea about the doomsday okay um anything else we should ask her i don't think there's anything else um blaze wiener we did um uh, we could actually ask her about the warehouse maybe she she knows like what what was your dad doing in that warehouse? Maybe no, or maybe if we use the full name, like the Bridgeview Warehouse. Actually, no, she doesn't know. Okay, anything else we should ask? I don't think we should. Tell me about you. No, tell me about licking couches. Okay, I'm getting goofy here. Okay, no, we don't need to ask anything else. I think so. Exit. Uh, back in the car and you know what let's just go back to the to the warehouse and check the computer because we completely forgot we have the pass card now um, so let's do this real quick 4660 off we go uh, 70 miles that's nothing if we were riding a bicycle maybe it was but let me use that time by the way to, to check it says um it says right here we've got four people watching is that true positivity bot oh that's not really someone apple bad apple cock whistle slow cool i don't know if, if you guys are really still there and if your bots are not or whatever but um hello Last time we wanted to go into the warehouse, there were like quite a couple of guys um, trying to trying to actually kill us. Is that going to happen again? I'm definitely going to save. Can we save right now? Or are we in the air? No. When can we save? Probably when we're grounded. I am hungry. <laughs> Your couch should be arriving any time now. So, we're descending to the ground. Can I save now? Nope. They have the, um, they have the shortcut key L for load, but saving is not S as you would expect, but actually D for disk, save to disk. Okay, so now we're on the ground, let's hit D. I still can't save. Oh, no, I actually can. So, somehow you have to hit the button twice, I don't know why. Uh, so game zero, 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 and now S is actually for save, so that's cool. Save game zero, 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 yes. Let's do save that, cool. Okay, so if we're being shot at now, then so be it. 
the three stone queen ends the home. Yeah, okay, we read that before. Oh, I went to the home of um, the professor. That's a bummer. That was um, that was stupid. Instead of going to the warehouse, I actually went to the um, home of Kalinsky, and I cannot even blame it on the Jackie because I didn't have any. Uh, Good guy, Tex had some, but I didn't have any. Damn it. Is there anything else we should do here? No, we really investigated this place. Sorry. So, sorry. We'll have to to uh, travel again. So, the warehouse was... Uh, what was it actually? The warehouse was... I have four pages of notes already. I mean, they're, they're very small, but um, that was quite fast to, to a mess. Okay, so the warehouse is five, six, seven, five. I'm going to tidy up all those notes for the next time. That's going to be nice. Um, autopilot, please. At least it's only four miles. But as we know by now, the distance to travel is really not the issue. It's really the, the landing. Because for some reason, the autopilot decides you need to be really, really high up at like 11,000 feet or whatever that is. Uh, when, you know, 800 would do. Shaves those tree tops. And here we have it, now we're at like 11,000 feet and then it takes ages to get back down. Come on, come on, come on. Down, down, down. You know what, I'm going to turn off the autopilot right now and then I'm going to actually hit the key to descend because I have a feeling it's faster if I just smash the key and, and make like a pretty rough, like almost crash landing. I think it's faster, right, than the autopilot. Oh, maybe I'm going too fast. No. Oh, but now we're like point, point 0.5 miles off. Damn it. Let's see if we can actually correct that. Careful now. So you see the heading above the joystick? That's where I'm looking at right now, the white line. Okay, so next time, autopilot all the way again. Right? Oh, the blinking, the blinking area, that's the landing pad. So at least we cannot possibly miss that. And look, we're still going forward a bit, I didn't know that. We still have some, um, some power going in the engine. Okay, okay, okay. I would say we're all good. Let's hit space. There we are. Hey, at least I did a bit of work. Oh no, it's happening again. We need to shoot our way in. <coughs> because every time we have to um, waste time and ammunition, um, which is limited. Tank this motherfuckers. Oh shit. Oh damn it. I actually died. I did better the last time, even though I was not prepared at all. And this time I, I should have known better, and yet I died. Well, that's really mean. Like, we killed them last time, and apparently they decided to come all back. Well, resume the saved game. You know what? I saved in front of the professor's um, office. A home, actually, home. Um, so we have to do the, the four miles again, uh, sadly. Um, next time I'm going to save right in front of the warehouse. That makes a lot more sense. These shooting sequences are not easy, because as you can see, they, they really hammer out those bullets. And there's almost no um, no space to actually get up and, and, and shoot back. And apparently what you need to do is you need to move all the way over to the other side of the screen. Um, like, otherwise they will just come back and back and back and there's going to be more and more guys. So you cannot just kill all of them, so you need to move. And the thing is, like, if you shoot and basically your, your whole character is locked, you cannot, like, move and shoot. Like, you can either shoot or get down get back up, shoot, or move, and there's always like a, a bit of time, like it's not going smooth one into the other, like there's a bit of like a timeout cooldown or whatever, so it's really hard because these guys are hammering out the bullets like crazy, so there's very little wiggle room to, to actually do move forward, like you you have almost no choice but to, to get catch some bullets while moving forward. 
pretty brutal to be honest, by the way. Apparently I'm quite close to the uh, screen, so let's move this down a bit. Okay. Let's try. No, I didn't save. I didn't save. Okay, let's not die. Let's not die. Let's definitely not die. I'm trying to just move as much as I can. Anything because of the um, oh, damn it. You see that the, this bullet's coming all the time. Move, move. And also, when you get hit by bullets, you actually move backwards. So it's like a double penalty. And these guys. guys they did not hold their hand at all. <laughs> oof, oof, okay. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Thanks. So this is the same text we had before. So I shouted, shouted, uh, la la la. So. We should be able to access the computer now because it re uh, required a pass card, and we found one in the in the little cabinet on the wall, in the like painkiller box actually. If it's painkillers, Pe Pepto Bismol. Anyone know what Pepto Bismol is? I have no idea what Pepto Bismol is. I should Google it, but let's not do that now. Computer. Um, turn on the computer. Okay. Look at the computer. Okay. Here we go. Insert blue pass card. I love the dithering. Pass card verified. Like the if you look at the um, input blue password. Oh no, we have a pass card, but we do not have a password. So it looks like we will have to come back here yet again, wasting more bullets. This is King Zordbrand. Ah, okay. So Pepto Bismol helps with heartburn. Thank you. Tararia. Um, okay, that's good to know, because Tex just downed half a bottle of Jackie, so um, he might need those soon. Input blue password, you know what, we had a list of passwords, but um, actually it said um, to, like, these are passwords to decode or encode or something, so I don't think these are actually the passwords themselves, I think we need to run them through some kind of device, but let's just try them out. Let's just try them out, because I've written them down. And you know it's quite quick to to try them out compared to um what did it say? I mean I, I assume it said that's not the right password. I should pay more attention. Invalid password, yes. I hope there's no um uh what do you say brute force protection because you know modern systems they have a brute force protection where if you put in uh, a password too many times like a, the wrong password too many times it will actually lock you out of the system or require like a two two factor authentication or something like this. I hope you don't have something like this here because I'm going to just um, put in all of these. And now, obviously, there's a bit of a danger that I did not write them down correctly because I did it real quick. But let's just hope. Uh, not Look at the font, by the way. This is really cool. This is like an all caps font, basically, but because it's so narrow, it's only three pixels wide. So this means some characters you, you can't really display them properly. For example, the N. Try to make an N when you have just three pixels in the width. So what they do here, you can see with this password, not gar, is they basically use a small N, but you know stylize it in a way that it fits in with the um, with the all caps font. And you can actually read that, and it's cool. Where it gets hard though is the the W, uh, the M, and the H. Um, because they all look pretty much the same, you can see it in password, um, where the W basically has the, the cross dash like slide it to the bottom, the H will have it in the middle, and then the M has it at the top. That's the only way you can kind of distinguish, but it still works, and you know, and you can still read it. And that's so cool. What you can do is just three pixels and not go. I shouldn't talk so much, I should just hammer in these passwords actually. Not invalid password. I should probably start from the bottom of this list. Oh, I just hope, you know, that I wrote them all down correctly, in case one of them is actually the right one. Because it would be so stupid if we were now in the warehouse trying this, and then... 
invalid. We still have six to go. See the M here? The M has the dash at the top. It's a lot. It's a lot. Nope, nope, nope. Three left to go. But again, I assume that we do have to actually decode or encode or whatever these passwords. Decode rather, like get the actual password out of this kind of encoded password. Uh, and what was this one? This is the last one where you can see a W and an H. They look pretty much the same on the invalid password. Okay. Useless list of passwords. That's not how you get into a computer. And by the way, look at this. I mean, I, I don't play so many games these days and not so many modern games, but most of the games I do play, it's basically you have a computer, next to it is a notebook, you find the notebook, it says password is fish, you put in fish, that's it. Here I have a pa list of, I don't know, what was this, 12 passwords, 13 passwords, that are all like random uh, letters, and then none of them is actually the right one. And every time you go into the warehouse, you have to fight your way through these guys who will just really kill you. On that note, look at this computer. I love pixel art. And what I love is you have the, the dithering, uh, meaning um, they could only use like a limited amount of colors. So to make a color gradient, um, they couldn't just go, you know, from, from through the whole palette, like using like hundreds of colors to make it a smooth transition so instead they use what's called dithering where you have a solid color and then when it transitions into the next color they just um, reduce the amount of pixels of that color and increase the amount of pixels of the next color you know until you finally go into full solid color again and then they do this over and over again this is what you often see with gif graphics um, because gif graphics are also using just a palette meaning a, a, a limited amount of, uh, of colors so, and I I love the aesthetics of that. Well, I don't know the password, you don't know the password, or if you don't, uh, if you do, you don't tell me, which is good. Um, wait a second, we did write down a passphrase. There was another passphrase we wrote down. It was a combination of numbers. Let's try that. Oh, that would have been so stupid to not try that. Remember that it was 37 dash. Oh, I cannot put in any dashes, so apparently that's not the one. I can put in dots, but no dashes. You know what? Let's just not put in any dashes. Let's put it in without dashes. No, let's put dots instead. Let's just like try everything because you know, once we have to go out of the warehouse and go back in, that's a lot of work. 37, maybe with space? No. Too bad. Too bad. Okay. How about one last try? How about what's the what's the date notation in the US? It's the one that is the least intuitive, meaning the year will not be first, but it will probably also not be last. No, that's not true. How was it? Like the US dates, they confused the hell out of me. Um I think it's month first, right? So that would be October would be ten. And then you would have do we have a slash? No, let's use a dot then. Then you'll probably have the day, and then the year, the doomsday, months, day, year, yeah, okay, months, day, year, so months, let's try with like this kind of notation, no, and let's try the last one that we could probably put in, which would be um, this one, oh, we have one more to go, Okay, no, the date is also not uh, the password. Although, you know what? Maybe they were really cool and they were using the International Standardization Organization standard for date notations without the dashes because no dashes, which is year, month, day, which makes a lot more sense. But that's not the password. Okay, I give up. I give up with the passwords. Too bad though, let's lick the computer. <laughs> For major appliance, its flavor is about average. I hope we didn't eat a key that we will still need later. Uh, you know, I ate the F key and then the password has an F in, in it. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh.
okay so great so we, we're going out of the warehouse and next time we come back we will be shot at like crazy again which is very mean mean streets i mean that's that's in the title mean streets okay where do we go we've been to um to sylvia linsky's house or office i'm not even sure but that's the location where we can meet her anyway we've been to karl linsky's home we have we've been to his office which basically was just a wall of text describing the the whole place and saying we cannot get in and we've been to his warehouse so we've basically checked his background uh, we found lots of weird notes um we know that there's a uh, um Someone's worried about a doomsday on the 3rd of October. We know that there's a project called Overlord, uh, which reminds me of a game, um, a rather current game. Um, and, um, and we know that um, Carl Davis, a scientist, died after a private investigator, Sonny Fletcher, warned Carl Davis uh, that they are after him. Um, they might be the same guys either who shot at me or might be the same guys who killed... Um, the Kalinsky or both. Um, we figured out that Kalinsky had a thing going with a lady called Sandra Larson, which was totally not the reason he broke up with his fiance. And um, we know that he had a student uh, called Blaise Wiener who got an E on his uh, test or whatever. So um, let's go to. I, w I would say let's go to the police detective, uh, which I think was Steve Clemens, was it? I hope Steve Clemens. So let's go to him and talk to him. That would make a lot of sense to see what he figured out, right? As a private detective, I would probably first get in touch with the police, check what they already know. If they tell you, I don't. I don't actually know how that works. If you are like entitled to get information from the police, Steve Clemens, here we come. Autopilot, yes, please. What's the icon of the police usually like? How do you stylize police? Because I want to make a little icon next to Steve Clement's name. I'm going to make it a star. Because the, like a sheriff's, sheriff's badge is usually a star, right? Is it? Maybe. I don't know. I've seen it a million times in movies and yet I don't know. We're again at 11,271 altitude units in our flying head star like in GTA oh then star will do down 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 bam let's get out oh get ready we might have to shoot you never know. I mean, it's a police station. We shouldn't have to shoot all the way. But I enter the West Precinct Station near the Bay Bridge. Walking down a narrow corridor, I see a number of posters in support of the Law and Order Political Party. So it is a political party. That's such a weird name for for a political party. Law and Order Political Party. Yeah, the music is the music is fantastic. I agree. It like actually gets you. <laughs> Gets you grooving. I find the office of police detective Steve Clemens and walk in. So, so apparently the Law and Order political party is a party that is um, very much in favor of like the police force. Apparently, otherwise the police force wouldn't put posters up, I guess, um, which kind of paints a, a quite a dark picture, um, dystopian picture of this futuristic society. Clemens greets me with his usual belli what? I've never seen that word. Belligerency? Bel bel what do you want, Seamus? <laughs> oh, look at him. He snarls. Look at him. He looks pretty young, actually. And he blinks. He looks funny. Okay, let's ask him a question. Well, the obvious question is our good guy, Kalinsky. Why are you interested in him? Well, I'm a private investigator and I'm being paid to. Oh, I get it. His daughter wasn't happy with our investigation. True. She's knocking the hell out of cops over a simple suicide. Well, she's wasting your time and her money. We've got a witness named Bash Daggett. Finally, we have the name of our witness. And my notes are getting out of hand. Bash. 
the go the go digit I will call them dead digit although I would assume that would have require one more G but uh, so that's the witness actually I definitely want to talk to that guy who saw him jump off the bridge he even left a suicide note he hands me the copy oh thank you I was so interested in it the note reads Sylvia I'm too tired and too sick of living please forgive me dad hmm now I'm not going to to say that I have any idea of what what a person would write if you would leave a message but to be honest I think anything is possible depending on the circumstances in the person but in most cases I would assume that the person would either not leave a note at all because like they don't have it in them anymore and they just feel like fuck everything or they would actually leave a note that gives a bit more closure to people that kind of reveals a bit more complaining about society or the circumstances or whatever this is a very short one. It does make sense though, like he just wants to say bye bye to his daughter maybe, but but I mean obviously the guy didn't kill himself, otherwise we wouldn't play this game. How much more proof does that girl need? More. Definitely not going to bribe a police uh, a cop. Definitely not going to threaten a cop, especially in a society where apparently the political parties um, are called law and order. But we can ask him about Barash Daggett Dago. I'm afraid the nicest thing I can say about Daggett is that he is the ultimate lowlife scumbag. But you trust what he's saying? You will find him past the mission district. Use 4657. 4657. That's definitely going to be the next location we're going to check out. Wow. He's an ultimate lowlife scumbag, but apparently, as a witness, he's good enough. You're making your life quite easy. Look at him, how angry he is. Question. Question about Sylvia Minsky. Am I writing Sylvia correct, actually? Yes. No, apparently not. Again. Sylvia. There we go. She's headstrong and thinks she knows everything, but she's a good-looking dame, that's for sure. Tex seems to agree. I've heard she's a bit frisky, so watch yourself. Well, that wasn't very helpful. Um, who's actually John Richards? I hope I never knew, because if I did, I forgot. He's so dull, he can't even entertain a doubt. Where he is, he's dull. Well, let's see about the fiance. Light buddy. Dolores, I never understood what Karl Linsky saw in her. If she were a building, she'd be condemned. <laughs> well, they have the coolest phrases in this game, actually. I've never heard any of them. <laughs> wow, ne no one seems to like Dolores. Um, let's ask about him, actually. I'll ask about you. Are you a good detective? I'm fine, but you didn't come here to talk about me. Well, partially I did. Um, now, I would like to know about MTC Corp. You should know. Can't help. I'm, I'm still not sure. Maybe MTC Corp without a dot. No, maybe MTC Corp Corporation. No, okay. Um, definitely Project Overlord. You don't even know about Project Overlord? Or you're not very cooperative. Um, what about law and order action? A lot of the police officers think the law and order party is just what the city needs, but that outfit scares me. Oh. Well, that's actually good. What is going on with his eye? Like, whenever he looks to the inside, it's turning red, and his head goes up. Like, his head. His, his head. Goes up. That scares me. Um, tell me about. Uh, what else did we have? We have the Doomsday. What about the Doomsday? Can I help you there? Okay. How about 3rd of October? I don't know how to write these um, things so that they would recognize it, but um, how about we had 
little creepy here. It's more than a little creepy, actually. Um, we had... I need to check the chat. Months, day, year. Okay, months, day, and year. So months was 10. Um, then I think... Oh, we cannot... Okay, let's use a dot. Day and year. That's doomsday. Can't help me. Okay. Um, insurance. I keep hitting the shift key to write in caps, but it, the game is actually doing that by itself, so... Insurance. I didn't know about insurance policy, Linsky. What? So this guy claims that this case is like completely solid and it's just like, you know, I know everything, it's clear, and he doesn't even know about the insurance policy that would give one million dollars to the daughter. You know, on the one hand, I like the guy because he kind of looks cool and he's critical about that political par party, but then again, like, how can you take him serious? Tell me about yeah. Let's try this date again. Um, month, day, year. No, no one seems to know about the doomsday. Okay, let's check the other names we have here. So we have the private investigator, Sonny Fletcher. Fletcher, yeah, I've heard of him. He used to be on the force. I think he's a PI now. You would be correct. He seems to be a PI now. Private investigator, that is. Um, Ah, we can ask about Saints Church, actually. Though I forgot what was up with Sa Saints Church, but I have written it down. Um, what about Sandra Larson? Uh, I have a feeling that he wouldn't even know about Sandra Larson, because if he doesn't know about the insurance claim, he can have... Right, let's see if I uh, had a typo there. Definitely no typo. Nope, he cannot help me. Okay. Then how about the student? Do you know about the student? No, you don't. Do you know about Jack Daniels? <laughs> no, he can't help me. I thought he knew where the rest of the bottle went, maybe. Um, we had, oh, the dead scientist, of course. The dead scientist who got warned by the private investigator. Can't help you there. He's not very helpful, actually, this guy, I have to say. Um, any other names? Yes, we ha do have the names of the Overlord project. I think I asked him about Overlord, yes. Um, that's John Claus, uh, who had a relationship to Kalinsky. Claus and Kalinsky used to work together, I know that much. They had a falling out over Mrs. Lightbody, I know that much. I don't think Claus ever forgave Linsky for taking his woman. Taking his woman? That's funny, so Linsky took his woman, Mrs. Lightbody, and then decided to dump her. So he lost a friend, he lost his uh, fiance, and then he lost his life. He lost everything. Okay, do you know about the other um, scientists on Project Overlord? There would be Maurice Gribble, for example. No, you don't? Wow. Uh, and then there would be David Pope. You don't know any of that. Um, well, thank you so much for nothing. Well, actually, thank you for giving me the address of uh, Bash Daggett, or, yeah, I'll stick with Daggett. I like it. It reminds me of X-Files. Um, okay, I'll have a refill and emptying, and then I'll be back.
There we go. Got two drinks. This one uh, should give you an idea of where I am. I mean, it says on the description down below, but uh, maybe you want to also be a detective and uh, have a little riddle to solve. This one should give it away, I guess. Um, let's open that up. Ah, one second. I'll come to you in five minutes, yeah? Okay, I'll have to have another short break in about five minutes. But until then, let's at least travel to um, Bash Daggett and talk to him. So, tell me about nothing, actually. I can't help you there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're going to meet the witness. Four, six, five, seven. Bash's call name. The um, the terminal in, in Linux, the like default terminal in most Linux distributions, is actually called Bash. At the same time, Bash, I think, is like to, to, like to bash someone, to, to hit someone, right? It's a cool name. I just don't know how to pronounce his last name. It seems almost French to me. Bash Dago, maybe? Right again, he's, he's staggered to me now. What was the guy in X Files called? I think it was Doggett? Dodget? Doggett? See, I don't know either, but something like it. Any X Files fans out there? We're descending. I'm not going to try to interrupt the autopilot anymore. That never worked out very well. Look at this. We have like pyramids now. What is it? With like a little flag on top. So apparently this is a shady district, right? It doesn't look like it on the map, but here we go. Oh, and I have to shoot again. Oh. It's very loud, isn't it? Let's move. First shoot. First move and shoot. Yes. I hope two screens is the maximum. Never wanna move more than two screens of this. You know, I should remind myself to always save before going into a new area because I would, might always be shooting and then I might die. They weren't kidding about this being a rough neighborhood. The blown out wasted buildings are occupied by the bottom rung of society. Hey, 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 no. You'd have to have a jungle mentality to survive here. I'll find a suitable place to wait. I'm hoping to see the guy who witnessed Linsky's suicide. Clemens showed me a mugshot of the Daggett. Well, he didn't show it to me, so he didn't show it to you, did he? I don't know. Whom he described as the ultimate lowlife scumbag. I finally see the guy. Looking at him quickly dispels the myth that a little inbreeding never hurt anyone. <laughs> wow. Hmm. He doesn't look that bad. I mean, he could use a shower and a new t-shirt for sure, but he has a cool bandana, so... Um, and it, it almost looks like, it almost looks like a joint to me, but who knows. And his hair is funny somehow, or maybe he has like a metal appliance even. Hey dude, uh, obviously tell me about, uh, Linsky. Can I just say Linsky? No. Okay, I have to specify the, um, the car, Kal Kalinsky. Um, stick it, fish face. <laughs> Should we bribe or threaten him? I have a feeling, since he's in such a rough neighborhood, threatening him will not really do anything, because he's probably not afraid. Um, bribing him could work, because again, he needs a new t-shirt, or more cigarettes. So let's try the bribing option. I don't even know if I have money. Yeah, right, we got money in the beginning. Sylvia Linsky actually equipped us with, I think, 10,000? So we can afford a little bit of a bribe. Yeah, we have 10,000. So what's your offer? 
I mean, if we, you know, we want information, and he knows we have some money, right? So I don't think we can give him like five, five bucks or something. He will probably be like, stick it, fish face. Um, so I would say let's try something. T-shirt is ten bucks. Cigarettes are ten bucks, and then ten bucks on top. Is that too little? Is this joke? Apparently, it's too little. Come on, take take a hundred. A hundred is a joke. I mean, all I want is some information. And for all I know, it, you might not give me valuable information, and then you want to have more than a hundred bucks. I don't know how many people I have to bribe during the course of this game. I I have like four hundred names written down already. One hundred twenty. Come on. Jeez. 200 bucks. You'll have to do better than that buckwheat. 200 bucks? Take 300. What? Holy moly. Okay, 400. Close, but no cigar. Yeah, no, you want to join the no cigar, right? 450. <laughs> 500, then. Come on. Thanks, buddy. I'll tell you what I know. 500 bucks, man. This guy is expensive. I hope he, he talks a lot though. Yeah, I saw the old Grizzard jump, but the whole incident was outrageously bizarro. There we go. The old geek walks by like Dawn of the Dead. Drug, maybe. Then when he was about 30 feet past me, he climbs over the barrier and no dives into the bay. The empty old buzzard didn't even hesitate. So it, it sounds like he was on autopilot, basically. Um, see how this guy See the an antenna sticking from his head? You never know. Oh, I cannot scroll up again. I, I would wanted to actually. Okay, so he was like zombie like, which, you know, pretty much is being like controlled or um, not thinking for yourself and um, just went for it. I, I kind of trust this guy because I don't think he has anything to lose, really. Um, so I think, apart from ripping me off, uh, he would probably tell the truth. So, um, now, he probably doesn't know any more about this. Like, he probably doesn't know anyone involved. But let's at least ask about the, uh, the detective. Clemens, there's a determined cop. Really? When he puts his foot down, someone is usually under it. Well, that's not the impression I got. I mean, he didn't even know about the insurance money. Or the, the student, which tells me he didn't like investigate anything properly. Let's ask him about Sylvia, obviously. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he got in contact with her, because why would he? Yeah. I again, did I spell that correctly? I have a habit of somehow misspelling her. No, okay. Um, I forgot who, again, I... I Again, can't still can't remember who S Richards was. I really should, but um, I'm going to basically type in every every um everything because you know now that I paid 500 bucks and went through all these guys who shot at me, I should you know get <laughs> get all the information that I can. So we're going to ask him about pretty much everything, and especially I'm hoping to finally get some information on the MTC Corporation. Damn it, man. Corporation. Nope. And let's try without dot. Corp. Nope. No one knows about MTC Corp. This is really weird. Um, Gideon Enterprises. Which, again, I have no idea where they come in, but they were in the manual, so we're asking about them. It's so pointless to ask this guy about a password, but you know, you never know in these games. That, you know, I. I when you play a couple of these games, you always feel like, okay, I'm stuck, let's try the absolute unrealistic thing, and then eventually that's it. You know, maybe the, the Linsky guy, Kalinsky, dropped the note with the password on, and this guy was like, oh, I don't know, let's take the password. No. Law and Order. What do you think about the Law and Order party? No way, I've got nothing to say. For 500, I would expect something else. Yes. I agree. I would expect a bit more for 500 bucks. Um, do you know anything about the whole insurance thing? Not insurance. No, you don't. Insurance? 
Okay. Um, what about Nexus? I don't know where they come in, and you don't know where they come in. Of, of course not. You just took the 500 coins and decided to just not tell me anything. Um, but again, I, I kind of assume you wouldn't know much. What about Overlord? Oh, damn it. Um, what about the student? Maybe Blaze Wiener has an E because he had a habit of, you know, hanging out with the wrong types of people, taking drugs, and um, make it worth my time. I haven't got all day. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> just give me some information. Okay, you wouldn't know Senator Larson, right? By any chance? No, of course not. Um, would you know the private investigator, Sonny Fletcher? Well, that's a possibility. He might have questioned you. No. Let's try this again just to make sure I didn't have a typo in here. Sonny Fletcher, that's it, no. Okay, so this guy didn't question him apparently. Um, the dead scientist. Ever heard of Kale Davis? No, you haven't. That's not the one. Um, what about the doomsday? Come on. You must know about the doomsday, right? Every day is doomsday for you. No, he doesn't know. Um, what about... Tell me about yourself, Mr. Dag it. My time's value. <laughs> I don't give anything for free. Wait, does this mean he wants more money? Do I need to give him money again? At the end of the day, I'm going to try and threaten this guy. I don't think this is going to help, but... He's... He's... He's not nice. Uh, let's ask him about three scientists from the... Um, from the Project Overlord. Heard of John Claus? No. Heard of um, Maurice Gribble? By any chance? No. Uh, what about David Pope, though? You've heard of the Pope, haven't you? No. Um, so, and now this is funny. My time is valuable. I don't give anything for free. So if I give him more money, would he tell me about himself? <sighs> you know, money is, is important, but um, let come on, one hundred more. I'll tell you what I know. At least you got a daughter or relative you'd like to line me up with. <laughs> No. No, I don't. But tell me about yourself now that you've got 600. No, still not. So I just gave you 100 and you just took it and decided not to give me any more information. That's so great. Um, no time to put him up to impl diplomacy. I threaten to bash and crack heads if I don't get the right information. Yes. Look at him now. Look at him now. Mr. One Brow is showing me some teeth. <coughs> I slam my fist into his soft, flabby stomach and he buckles over. I then catch his chin with a solid haymaker that sends him staggering back against the wall. Okay, okay, that's enough. I'll talk. Why did I give this guy 600 bucks? I could have just punched him right right away. I didn't know Tex was that badass because we're in this horrible neighborhood and there's this guy who looks beaten up anyway so he really doesn't strike me as a guy who would, you know, take well to to physical you got a daughter or relative you'd like to line me up with? No, but tell me about yourself uh, Bash No you don't? Cool. You, you know, I think beating him up was kind of pointless because I think he told us everything he would have told us after the 500 bucks. So I think both the additional 100 bucks and the beating up was completely um, pointless. I think. Um, I assume. Um, we can. We can. You know what? We'll ask him about the pass card. No. Didn't we already do this? I don't know. No. I think we asked him about everything. So yeah, we spent more money than we should have on the guy, and um, but at least we we punched him. So that's kind of satisfying. Um, he still looks the same, by the way. Uh, okay, I'm gonna be AFK for like five minutes. Gotta say goodnight to someone. Uh, and then I'll be back here. And um, then we'll travel some more and probably shoot some more. And most importantly, save the game just in case. So, um, see you in five.
see, this might be uh, a bit of a problem now because someone else is sleeping in this apartment apparently and walls are very thin. So if my voice is too loud and they cannot sleep, then I might have to, you know, call it a day. Um, but we'll see about it. We'll try. As you can tell, I'm drinking a lot. It's always important to stay hydrated. I easily get headaches if I don't drink a lot. Mm. Hence, I go to the toilet a lot. Um, so, let's see. So, we've talked to this guy. I hope I'm not missing anything. Because, like the warehouse, he is someone who's basically um, guarded by a wall of, of I don't know what, what they even are. Gangsters? Crazy people? Um, so every time we want to talk to this guy, we need to go through this like shooting thing. And I, I, I assume I'm, I'm getting better at it, hopefully. So the danger of dying, hopefully, isn't as high anymore. But it's still annoyingly loud and, and, and hard, actually. Not annoyingly hard, annoyingly loud and hard. So um, I think it's good that it's hard. Uh, you know, games shouldn't be super easy. So, okay, let's, let's try Law and Order again, by the way. Because now he got more money, maybe. No way, I've got nothing to say. See, because this is something he knows about it. It's something you can ask him about. So you would assume that there's some information hidden, but now I gave him 500, which made him talk. I gave him 100 more, which opened him up again, and I punched him. And, you know, so we, we've, we've, we've drilled three holes in this guy, and still there's no information spilling out um, about law and order. Uh, and he's getting very upset if you ask him about it, as, as you can see from his face. I love that, by the way, this, like, kind of, um, apparently they just took a photograph of someone and then, you know, turned it into this pixelesque mess. I love that. And, of course, back then they didn't turn it into a pixelesque mess because they thought it was a cool s way of stylizing the thing, but it, because of the technological limitations. I mean, the game is actually a 320 by 200 pixel game, <laughs> right? So... 320 by 200 pixels is, is like not a lot um, and then you have the limited color palette so you know this is the best they, they could do basically but I love it I absolutely love it I, w I, I love playing games like this okay so I have no idea what we can ask, uh, ask this guy so I'm just going to tell him to fuck off and then we'll get out of here and where do we go next actually let's see um we can you know what, let's go to John Richards, because honest to god, I completely forgot who John Richards is. But, let's figure it out by going to him. He's the next on my list, so... Um, let's bring up the navigation, and enter the nav code for John Richards, which again, I got from the manual, but that's the way it's like supposed to be. So, destination locked, and autopilot engaged. It's only three miles. Which means that uh, traveling the three miles again will be a lot faster than actually descending down once we're there. By the way, if I don't know if, if anyone's like um, actively watching, or you know, apart from Terraria, obviously. Um, but if you are, let me know if you actually know this game. Um, you know, and you're kind of like curious to see how someone else is experiencing the game and what they think about it. Um, or if this is also like a first playthrough for you. Um, it would be interesting to, to know. Oh look, there's, there's a bridge. You think that's the bridge he, uh, the guy killed himself on, the Golden Gate Bridge? I don't think so because it looks red. <laughs> but and the golden gate is golden, right? It is, hopefully. Anyway, let's save the game at this point for sure. Uh, let's save on the on the same slot. Yeah. Okay, cool. There's not a lot of feedback, but I uh, ho assume and hope that it did save. Otherwise, that would be quite sad. Okay, let's get out and let's see if we have to shoot our way to some. No, luckily we do not have to shoot. Thank you. Walking inside the first time I see this thing. 
Walking inside the medical examiner's office is a truly depressing experience. Long, cold, dark corridors and stainless steel utensils. I have a feeling the music is so loud that while the music is blasting, I shouldn't talk probably because I think the music is just way too loud. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a series actually, like seven parts to this game actually, and, and the newest parts are quite like recent and have quite nice graphic. Um, so and it's they're all available on GOG, and I bought the first couple of parts. I don't even know. I think the first three or four or whatever when they were on a sale because they looked cool. So the medical examiner's office, by the way. So I assume that John Richards would be the medical examiner. That's my my best guess. Um, they've gotten so busy down here, they've had to install a conveyor belt. Holy moly! So the the, the corpses are actually c coming in on a conveyor belt, like you know, at the airport, your luggage would, or at the cash register. I wonder how much longer I've got before the meat wagon brings me here. Well, at least six more games. Tax, don't worry. For my ride down the disassembly line. Disassembly line. He probably just said, says disassembly line, but then again, since the game is set in 2033, you know, you never know if maybe actually people are kind of like enhanced by technology. Some, you never know. Um, John Richards, the ME, medical examiner. So, you know what? I'm going to write that down right away because I would forget it otherwise. Medical examiner. Good to know. So that's finally out of the way meets me in the examination room. He's pretty strange. There we have him. He doesn't look strange though. But it would take someone who's pretty strange to do a job like this. Well, I don't necessarily agree. I don't think you need to be strange. You just have to have a certain interest and mindset. But So, obviously, the first question, as always, is about Kalinsky. Tell you about Linsky's death? Nothing odd about this one. He jumped off the bridge, massive shock when he hit, lungs filled with water, death as a rock. I'll send you a copy of the autopsy report. Which reminds me, we did get a copy of something before. Ah, yeah, right, the, the death note, which was read, uh, read to us, so that's fine. I'll send you a copy of the autopsy report. I wonder how is he going to send that to me? Ah, right, I have a fax machine in my car, actually. <laughs> That is so cool. It's like 2033 and you have a fax machine in the car. Brilliant. Um, okay. Tell me about uh, Sylvia. Sylvia Linsky. I need to pay attention. I tend to misspell Sylvia. Maybe I have. Sylvia Linsky. No, I don't. Uh, okay, so she didn't talk to him apparently. Or he doesn't want to talk about that because maybe she was doing too much of the lippy licky licky. Um, then tell me about the police guy. Uh, his name was Steve Clements. You must have talked to him, right? He's a good cop, even if I don't always approve of his methods. Yeah, you know, pe people keep telling me he's a good cop, but I'm not so sure about it. Lungs full of water, then he must be still alive after hitting the water. Oh, look at you, Detective Terraria. That's a good one. Is that what's happening? Like, like let's see, let's say you you die when you hit the water because you hit it in such a stupid angle or whatever. Would your corpse not also fill up with water? Because I think when you die, your mouth opens. I don't know. But I, but I trust what you say. Hmm. He's a good cop, even if he uh, I don't approve of his methods. Well, okay, good. Let's let's trust you because you're a medical examiner. So. Um, I don't see. If you don't even know about Sylvia Linsky, then you probably don't know about Dolores, right? Light buddy. No, of course you don't. And also, you probably wouldn't know about uh, Kalinsky's lover, would you? Or possible lover, Sandra Larson? No, you don't. Okay. But as someone in the medical field, which puts you, at least in my opinion, into the realm of scientists, maybe you do know about the deceased scientist. Carl Davis. Yes, you do. I read about him a few weeks ago. Didn't he die of poisoning? Isn't it strange how many accidental deaths and suicides have occurred lately? Sure is crazy. 
Oh, okay. So you know what? I'm, I'm going to write this down. I don't know. Was poisoned. Poisoned. You know, he was poisoned, so he had some toxin in his body, and we assume, or I assume, that uh, Kalinsky has also been under the influence of some form of substance or mind control or whatever. So, you know, it's not too far fetched that um, Kalinsky and and Carl Davis have been killed uh, by the same person or the same group of people. So it would be pretty cool to talk to Sonny Fletcher, the private investigator, because he warned uh, Carl Davis that they are after him. So apparently um, that would be a great lead. So ask about uh, Johnny Fletcher, the private investigator. Can help you here, just to make sure I didn't typo in here. No. Um, okay, so that he doesn't know. What about the student? Um, why would you know about the student? I don't know, but maybe you do. No, you don't. Right. Um, you know what? What about the warehouse? And I don't know if warehouse is the right term or if we need to actually specify bridge view warehouse. It's also possible that bridge view warehouse isn't a topic you can talk about with anyone. But um, so tell me about Doomsday. Come on, you know about Doomsday, right? No one knows about Doomsday. But I have a feeling this guy might know a little bit about MTC Corp. Come on. Oh, come on. By the way, you know, I, I always assume that people like this, like, we don't need to bribe them. Because I don't see why they would kind of lie to us. But then again, this is a shady world, right? So maybe I should just, <laughs> like, toss out money like crazy and, and they would tell me more. But he seems willing enough to talk. Mm. Plus, so far, if I understand correctly, if there's something people would talk about, but they do not talk about because they feel like you know they don't trust you, or whatever. Um, judging by what happened with Bash Taggett, he actually said, well, you know what, I'm not talking about that topic. Uh, instead of saying the standard phrase of uh, I know nothing about it or whatever it is. Um, so I assume if there is like reason to br bribe someone, then they kind of tell us, but by saying you know, oh, not about this topic, dude. Um, so I'm not going to bribe this guy. Um, tell me about Gideon Enterprises. Enterprises. I've heard the name before. I think Linsky was associated with them. Well, it's the first time I learned something about them, I think. It's not much, though. Connection to, to Linsky is all. How about... What do you think about the party? What do you think about this weird law and order party? That's one political group I steer clear of. Okay, well, your your favorite cop, you know, um, did the same thing with his eyes when I asked him about it, which is quite interesting. Um, maybe there's some sort of mind control going on, actually. Like, and if you say that, like law and order, people kind of like, like, you know, the antenna goes off and is like, don't say anything. I don't know. That would be pretty cool. What about Project Overlord? Tell me about Project Overlord. I'm sending it to your antenna. Sorry, can you, this is the standard phrase. Sorry, can't help you there. So I think if we read this, it basically means there's nothing to dig deeper. They just don't know about it. Mm. What else? Oh, you wouldn't possibly know. Uh, why am I always typing insure race? In, in insure race. Uh, you wouldn't possibly know about the whole insurance thing. I mean, not even the cop did. Of course not. What about Nexus? Who or what is Nexus? You don't know? No? Well, I don't know. Then, the last three things I think we can ask him about is the... Oh, no, actually, would you have any idea what the password is for Kalinsky's computer? No? Of course not. Um, we can still ask him about the three overlord scientists, namely John Claus. Can I help you? Um... Maurice, what was it? Dribble? Nope. And the last one, the Pope. No, you don't know any of them. Oh, one second. What about our witness, Bash Daggett? Wow, you're not talking much, actually. I mean, you know, you're down here in the examiner's room doing your bloody stuff, so I guess you don't get to talk to people a lot. So it's kind of understandable, actually. 
Um, that's it, right? Nothing else to talk to this guy. Let's bail. Did I forget something? Any important topic? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Probably did. But um, the password, I wonder how we can get to, to decode or encode the password. Oh, well, I asked him about the password pass card. And we do have the pass card already, so I'm not sure why the manual says we should ask about a pass card, which it does. Um, okay. Bye. Sorry. Ooh. Receiving a fax. He's fast. He said he's going to send us a fax, and there it is. Dex Murphy PI. Time 2.23. So, ah, by the way, there's the date. September 25. Um, which, assuming the month September is 30 days, uh, would put us eight days away from the doomsday, actually. <laughs> uh, an autopsy was performed on the body of Kalinsky at the office of the medical examiner on the 21st day of September 2033. Sex male, height 5... Thinglingy ten thingilingly bingly um I mean it's it's five feet ten inch, right? But even then I don't know what that means. Inch, I think an inch is two point five four centimeters or something like this, but feet I have no idea. If it's my feet it's different than my girlfriend's feet, so he was blonde, blood type A, Caucasian, hundred and sixty oops, what is LDS by the way? I again I have no idea about these um units brown eyes and he was 62 external examination body is cool to the touch with fixed vigor in the extremities cool to the touch okay oh there's more there's more neck head brain a small burr hole in the skull what's a burr hole let's quickly look that up um burr hole Burr, burr, burr. So burr is ah like from a drill or something. Uh, a small burr hole um, in the skull indicates recent surgery. Yeah, or they put something in his brain to control him. Structured base of brain intact. Neck shows massive damage to spinal cord caused by severe impact. That's so crazy, right? That like impacting with the water. That's still something that baffles me. Uh, internal examination. The pulmonary system is purple and shows a large amount of blood and frothy fluid in this chest and stomach. So we're in September. Frothy. Let me quickly also look up frothy because I'm not sure. Shaumic. Frothy. Okay, so it's foamy. Foamy. Why would there be foamy fluid? Is, is that what happens to water? Like it mixes with, I don't know, the bubbles of the lung that kind of collapse or whatever, and then, or is that something that 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 we shouldn't be finding there? But then the the examiner said everything was normal. So remarks: death caused by massive shock and drowning. Time of death estimated at between 10 p.m. and 11:30 p.m. September. P.m. I admit this is also something that still confuses me, AM, PM. Uh, we do use the 24-hour system uh, in Europe, or at least in Germany. So, um, But PM, I think, is in the evening, right? Yeah, it's in the evening. So, Okay, so in the late evening, um, September the 20th, which is five days ago. Dr. John Richards, medical examiner. Okay, so... Um, massive shock and drowning, yeah. So what's interesting is obviously the, the burr hole in the skull, um, because it says here it indicates recent surgery, but now I'm not a doctor, but I don't think there's too many um, medical procedures where you would like drill a hole in the skull. I think when you drill a hole in the skull, it's usually to relieve pressure. For example, if you um, if you had a stroke or n any other kind of like trauma or whatever that would cause some swelling of the brain or build up a fluid or blood, uh, I think this is like pretty much the only thing where they would like drill a hole, right, to relieve pressure. Um, and then I'm, I'm wondering if they would just leave it open, actually. Anyway, so my theory, as you can tell, is that there's some kind of brain, brain control going on, uh, either by um, 
substances or by devices or a combination of both. Okay, and we have a frothy fluid in the chest and stomach. Chest and stomach. So um, you could swallow water, I think, if you drown, right? Like in the process of drowning, you, you probably go crazy and try to get air any means possible. And then you, you probably also like swallow the fluid, I would assume. But maybe that's also from the, the poison or whatever. Moving on. Um, so we did talk, uh, we did check out Kalinsky's office. We didn't get in. We did check out Kalinsky's home. Checked very thoroughly. We checked the warehouse um, where there's one thing left to do, which is to break into the computer, but we do not have the password, not the right one anyway. We talked with Sylvia Linsky twice. We did talk to John Richards, the medical examiner, just now. Um, we did talk to the police officer, Stephen Clemens, the cop, and, um, and we did talk to um, Bash Dodgett, who is the, the witness. So there's one person left to talk to, and that is Dolores Lightbody, the, the lady that Kalinsky was with, but, uh, but then um, either broke up with or planned to break up with. So that's our next location. So, did you even understand what I said? Because the, the engine sound is quite loud, and I'm kind of and I'm having a low voice, and yet I've just been told that I need to reduce my volume even further because people can't sleep. Now that I can tell you is the horrible thing about Japan: walls out of paper. Pilot engaged. Let's go there. turn off the engine sound um, which takes away from the immersion I guess but I'm doing it now because I have to talk over the, the, the game sound apparently and um, since I have to talk with such a low volume I would assume that no one can understand me if the engine sound is going on so I'm taking advantage of this um, performance tool actually I read in the manual they, they built this in that you can turn off the engine sound because apparently back when the game was released just playing the sound would take up so much resources that if you had a slow computer, this could be too much. So then you could hit the S yes key, S for sound, uh, and turn off the engine sound to make the game run uh, a bit better. Kind of cool. Because that's something you, like, we could not really imagine nowadays, right? That you have to turn off sound to, <laughs> to improve your performance. Okay, we're here and now we're going to save the game just in case someone is trying to kill us when we get out of our car. Alright, ready to go? Ready to go. No one's going to kill us. That's the same kind of building. Oh no, what did I... So apparently I made a mistake, again, a mistake, not the first one tonight, um, and again, not again, but um, I went to the wrong place. Well, yeah, again, I went to the wrong place. I wanted to go to um, to Dolores, and apparently I punched in Sylvia's uh, location uh, code or, or navigation code. So I'm sorry, Sylvia, but um, as nice as licking your lips is, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to Dolores, and now I'm going to double check. Dolores is 4920. Let's have a nice ride again. We don't have engine sounds now, so at least <laughs> there's that. 
so yeah it, it, I really love the aesthetics of these old games um, I mean the cockpit again the cockpit isn't that nice because it's somehow the outside is incredibly simple so that's a weird mix with the inside of the cockpit and then that's again like a bit of contrast to the legs and the seat and the hands that you see because they are quite detailed um, and then if you compare that to the kind of like basically photographs of the people you talk to those are like completely li uh, different levels of, of graphics actually and um, so I, I really enjoy the um, the dithering and, and photographic kind of graphics I have to say and also the backgrounds like the rooms are also cool which again are a bit of a different style a bit of a different graphic quality so there's a bit of an inconsistency I have to say but it's nothing that like it's not off-putting um, it's just quite obvious that you have these different levels of um, styles and, and graphic quality like when we looked at the computer screen in the warehouse that was really nice like that had a ni nice dithering kind of um, gradients the top of the car here for example is just plain color for example so that that is a difference Descending from 11,000 millimeters. Who knows? Okay, uh, shall we save? Let's save. And battle. No battle, I guess. waiting for the music to to play so I don't have to talk against the music over the music Dolores Lightbody lives in a well-kept Victorian house in a neighborhood filled with the houses of attorneys and bankers okay so she's got a bit of money I walk up to the front door and ring the bell she answers the door Mrs. Lightbody is not what I expected she has the f <laughs> no She's definitely not what I expected. I can totally agree. <laughs> ah, she has the face of a saint, a Saint Bernard. I don't know what the Saint Bernard is, but I mean, look at her. You, you can kind of get the joke anyway. <laughs> wow. She's quite something, isn't she? Well, let's start with the obvious question first again. What about your lovely Mr. Kalinsky. Oh, she's crying. Or rather, it is crying. <laughs> no offense to anyone who identifies with Mrs. Um, Light Buddy, which now you can kind of see at the very beginning when I heard the name Light Buddy, I said you would assume someone who's lightweight. I was wrong. Carl was my fiance. And he had been quite upset lately. He was worried about the project he was working on. He wouldn't talk about it in specifics. Carl lived at 4660. We've been there. Maybe he had two apartments, but no. But he didn't work there. I think he had a lab somewhere in the city. Yeah, I think it might have been in a warehouse. His work must have been for the government because everything was top secret. All right. Okay, so he was working on this top secret project which might have the name uh, Overlord, I would assume, uh, even though there's there's different things, like there's Overlord, but then we also have, what do we have here? We have um, the Nexus, which could be some kind of cool project um, name as well. Um, and then there's the, the Doomsday, you know, maybe there's a Doomsday project, but who knows. Okay, so um, tell me about... Um, Overlord, is that the project he was working on? I mean, she probably wouldn't know, but can't help you there. Oh, now she's laughing again. She was just crying, now she's back to laughing. Mm, tell me about the the, um, the witness, Daggett. Can't help you, okay. Um, let's talk about the cop. Arthur Clemens asked me some questions about Carl's death. I'm glad he did. 
I'm glad he did. Because I, I, I d again, I don't have a feeling he, he did too much. Uh, I'm afraid I couldn't help him much. Well, okay. Um, so then what about Sylvia? I guess you don't like her, right? Because she does not like you. Sylvia and I never got along very well. When her father died, she was quite upset. Yes. She was even more upset when she talked to Peter Dull. Peter Dull? Peter Dull? The insurance agent. Haha. <laughs> insurance agent. Writing that down right away because I've made the mistake of writing down names in the past and not writing down what their connection or occupation is. It seems the insurance company would not pay the $1 million because her father's death was declared a suicide. Correct. Um, which, by the way, makes it pretty obvious, or w would assume that it's pretty obvious, that um, Sylvia itself was not responsible for killing him, neither direct nor indirect. Um, because if she wanted to get the money, and if, like, the... If it cannot be a suicide, but it has to be an actual murder, then obviously, you know, if she wanted to have the money, she would probably hire someone for, let's say, two thousand um, dollars, or five thousand, or one hundred thousand, or whatever, to get the dad killed in an obvious murder, so that the, she can then check cash in on the money. So I do think that she's not the one responsible for his death, but she simply wants to have the money. Um, tell me about, well, what about yourself, actually? You know what? Tell me about yourself, uh, Mrs. Uh, Dolores Lightbody. <laughs> I guess <laughs> there's the whale, sister. Oh, yeah, yes, <laughs> I can see the whale now. <laughs> I guess I'm just lucky to be beautiful. But don't try anything with me now, because I'm too upset. Come back in a week or so. <laughs> Come back in a week or so. Yes, I surely will. Not. I'll make sure not to come back in a week or so. Um, I don't think she would have anything to say about the medical examiner. John Richards? No. Um, let's check the other names on our list. Did we already ask her about b the, the only guy I can spell out of my head, apart from Kalinsky? And Sylvia Linsky, actually. No. Um, please tell me you finally know something about MTC Corp. Because, damn it. Um, you know what? I don't mind. That's so. That doesn't paint a good picture of myself. But I don't mind punching her in the face. <laughs> so maybe. I, I get the feeling no one so far. Absolutely no one talk to us about MTC Corporation, which is the first thing written down in the manual. Like the first name, the first keyword to, to ask about is MTC Corporation. So I get a feeling someone must know something, but no one's talking about it. So maybe someone has to, we have to make someone talk maybe. Then again, my theory was that if they say sorry, that there is nothing to dig. But you know, Let's try punching her anyway at the end of this. Um, before that, tell me about Overlord. The the fact that she has a lot of lots of money automatically makes me think that she knows something about one of these corporations or projects, um, because the money has to come from somewhere. Now, of course, you know her fiance was the the professor, but apparently they weren't in a good standing. Um, so I don't know if there was a lot of money flow and apparently she can still afford her place so you know I would think that she's tied in with some kind of um, wealthy corporation or even the government um, tell me the password give it to me no of course not uh, what about law and order I'm, I have a feeling she, she's going to like them I've heard the name but I don't know much about them I'm not very political well then why are you crying now this might be just like, you know, a weird selection of the emote they put on her. Um, but in a detective game, I don't think that's a coincidence. So why is she crying about it? 
Hmm. Did they kill her beloved Kalinsky? Um, tell me about Nexus. Do you know anything about Nexus? No. What about Gideon Enterprises? Gideon Enterprises. No. Oh man. Give me the past cards, but I already have. I don't know what's the point of asking this. Um, tell me a bit more about the whole insurance thing, please. Carla taken a life insurance policy out several months ago. That's not too long ago. He was worried about his health and wanted to leave his daughter something. Why was he worried about his health? I mean, sure, at 62, I guess you you know, can, should be worried about your health. But then again, 62 would be as good at 58 or 66 or 70. Um, okay. He probably knew that they were after him because they killed his colleague, right? Uh, his colleague, Carl, Carl Davis. So, I know nothing about it. Um, tell me more about the insurance agent, Peter Dahl. You, you seem to know about the insurance deal. He was called insurance agent. He works at... Here we go. Four, six, seven, four. So there's a lead. Finally, we have something. Because we're actually like running out of places to go and people to talk to, so it's good to get some new kind of leads. Um, what else was there? Um, did we ask about Doomsday? Did we ask? I forget who I asked about what, so I'm just gonna punch these things in real quick. I should I should make like a check um, list anyway. Okay. Oh, of course we have to we have to ask her about who. This might be a bit problematic. Good. Did I write that correctly? That's not possible. She needs to know about Sandra Larson, right? Because in the in the breakup note uh, that Kalinsky might not have actually sent her or given her, uh, because it was in his paper bin, he said, I'm breaking up with you, but I swear it had totally nothing to, to do with Sandra Larson. So, ah, I did misspell that. Wow. She's a no good tramp who tried to steal Carl from me. Okay. So she knows she knows about it, but she's not talking very much about it. I mean, I would like to talk to her. No one seems to know where I can actually find this lady. Um, even though I, I, I might have misspelled her before. And <laughs> by the way, look at this face. <laughs> That's a that's a beautiful face right there. Um, okay, what about do you know about this location, the warehouse? No, Bridgeview Warehouse. No, okay. Mm, how about do you know about the Doomsday thing? No, you don't. Um, Saints Church. I, I've written down Saints Church, and I've completely forget forgotten the whole context. So. Um, Ah, we have not gotten any information about Blaise Wiener so far, and seeing that Blaise Wiener apparently was a student of Kalinsky, and Kalinsky, you know, was obviously, I guess, talking to his girlfriend, I'm gonna call her, his thing friend. No, she doesn't. Oh, um, is it time to, um, is it time to just you know, try how how it feels to, to punch in, in, in this I mean no, before we do that we'll ask about the other scientists on Project Overlord and finally we get some information I mean, we've got a bit of information on John Claus before, that he's like a friend of Kalinsky, but maybe we get some more now he's, she's crying again he, she, it Carl and John Claus were partners once. I was dating John at the time, but when I met Carl, I fell head over heels in love with the little cutie. When I told John, he flew into a rage and vowed never to work with Carl again. I see him from time to time, but lately he's been acting very strange. Maybe they drilled a hole in his head. That would explain something. He believes he is in danger. He might very well be. 
He's hiding out in Moreno, Nevada, right now. Whoa, look at that. I will write down in danger. Uh, I'll also write down that uh, she, the Dolores Light Buddy, had some connection to this guy, some connection. Um, <laughs> how is it possible that, that several men I know there's a fetish for everything, I know, inner beauty and all that kind of jazz. But come on. That's that's not the kind of lady you would expect to easily uh no, well anyway. Uh so that's uh seven oh one two. And he's in danger. Which means he might be hiding and he might have hired some people to protect him, so we might have to shoot our way in Reno Nevada. Okay. Um, you know what? I think we'll visit, um, we'll visit, uh, John Claus and the insurance agent, uh, and whatever new leads we get, uh, I'll just write them down and, um, basically then continue this maybe tomorrow, um, because I need to whisper the whole time. It's quite annoying. Uh, but let's definitely go to the insurance agent first, uh, and then to the other guy. Shall we threaten her first? I mean, she was kind of cooperative. I feel bad about, about, about actually getting physical here. I wanted to do it in the beginning, but it's really mean, actually. Like, that's bullying, basically, right? If you like, look at her, oh, she's ugly, let's punch her. Let's not do this. We're a private investigator and not a bully. Okay. Here we go. Visiting Peter Dull. The name, again, is kind of suggestive. Um, 4674 Peter Dull. I'll engage the autopilot and while we're flying 17 miles I will stay hydrated. Look at this. I was faster than the autopilot. I really do stay hydrated, as you can tell. Landing pad contact. Let's save the game, because you never know what will happen when you get out of that car. Flying car hover car, car plane, here we go, no shooting, good. Waiting for the music to be over again. Peter Dahl is the vice president of the Trans America Insurance Company. Most insurance people aren't really exciting, but he's so boring, hence the name, even looking at, <laughs> even looking at him could put you to sleep. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he does look like the kind of guy who could read, read a book to you and you would fall asleep over it. Um, he strikes me more as a psychologist though. As, as an insurance agent, to be honest, from, from his looks. I don't know why. I think it's the 
mustache, mu mustache, mu mustache. I have no idea how to pronounce the thing. The beard, the beard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's ask him some questions. And again, our first question always: What about Kalinsky, dude? Mr. Linsky had taken an insurance policy out on himself in July. The amount of the policy was one million dollars. That much we already know. As you are certainly aware, there is a clause in life insurance policies that, in the event of a suicide, the policy is null and void. Yep, we figured that much out. And the person who is quite upset about this is obviously his daughter. Sylvia Linsky. Sylvia Linsky demanded that her father's insurance be paid, but the policy becomes void in the case of a suicide. I told her we were very sorry, but nothing could be done. She screamed, we'll see about that, and stormed out of my office. Right? That fits exactly what we've learned so far. She's upset that she doesn't get the one million. Um look at him grinning by the way is that a grin even it, it looks it looks so scary because he's still like you know doing this <laughs> is that supposed to be like I'm so smart I don't know um, okay let's figure out if the, the cop actually talked to you I'm always interested you know to check with people if the, if the cop actually investigated that deep or if we're actually you know going deeper Really? He didn't? Let's let's check that again, just for the possibility of a typo. No, okay. The cop did not talk to him, apparently. Bad cop. Um, let's, well then let's ask him about basically everything else uh, on our list, really. Uh, we we'll, we'll start with the medical in, in examiner. Because I assume he would know something about this, because I would guess that an insurance company has to check back um, with the examiner, right? Or maybe not, maybe just with the police report. Maybe. Again, double checking. No. Um, I'm pretty sure you would not know about our light buddy. You do. Dolores light buddy. Not only has she kept her girlish figure, she's doubled it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I was about to say he's been brainwashed as well but then <laughs> she's doubled it yes she's definitely doubled it maybe tripled um, flip over this page uh, what about now here we go you're a corporate guy you must know about MTC corporation right man I really want to know about MTC corporation Without a dot, nope. Full, nope. No one knows about MTC Corporation, or at least no one wants to talk about it. So th there must be something there. Um, I have also didn't get much information on Gideon Enterprises, apart from that there's a um, connection to, to Kalinsky. He can't help me there, okay. Do you know anything about Project Overlord? No, you don't. Um, would you have a password for me? Because I really need that password. <laughs> no? <laughs> oh. What's your standing with the whole political system here? I've heard the name. Like, that's so weird. I've heard the name, uh, but I don't know much about them. I'm not very political. That's the same that um, our tripled girl has said. Um, I, I find this weird because saying I've heard the name um, strikes me as they're a super small party, like a super small niche party, but then uh, their posters are all over the police station, so you would assume that, you know, they're not, not, not that small. Mm -hmm. I haven't asked him about himself. What was your name? Was it Peter Doll? Peter or... Um, Yes, Peter Dog. I love my work in the insurance field. It's my life. Life insurance. I've been thinking about a policy for a man in your line of work. How about a limited pay, 
whole life plan with an optional family rider and waiver of premium with disability accident and dismemberment benefit. You know what? I'll pass for now. <laughs> um, but what if we ask him about insurance in general? Like, Professor Linsky took, okay, yeah, that's the whole blabberly blab we got at the beginning. Um, did you know that um, Mr. Linsky actually had a side chick? Because, you know, a tripled girl still wasn't enough for him. No, you don't know that. Um, did you know that he had a student who wasn't a very good student? No, you also don't know that. Um, do you know about the deceased scientist Carl Davis? Maybe he had life insurance as well, because he has been warned that he might... No, you don't. Um, have you been questioned by Sonny Fletcher? No, you haven't. Um, tell me about Doomsday. Do it. No. Um, Project Overlord. Come on, I want to know about it. Um, okay. <laughs> what else is there? Uh, what else can we ask him about? We can ask him about three scientists connected with uh, Overlord. Uh, John Claus, who we are going to visit. Uh, but you don't know anything about him. Um, Maurice, where was it? Cripple. Maurice Cripple. Nope. And the last one, David Pope. Okay, can't help you. Mm, what about the, the witness? Because I think witness, you know, might be something you know about. No, you don't. Okay, now there's obviously no point in bribing this guy. Uh, he, he's got money. Um, I'm not going to, to punch, like, this guy. Um, but we did not really get much out of him, did we? Like, there wasn't much new information. We didn't get any new locations or anything. Um, didn't learn about any of the organizations that I was hoping to learn from, like a corporate guy. Uh, I really hoped that we would learn about MTC Corp. So, um, but that's okay. We can always come back to this guy. He's not guarded by any army of crazy people. Um, so we're going to probably the last target for today, which is John Claus, who was listed as the first scientist working on Project Overlord, and who apparently thinks that he's in danger. Um, I would think I'm in danger, because I would assume, um, like my assumption is that all these scientists have worked together on Project Overlord, meaning Kalinsky, Carl Davis, uh, and then the three mentioned on the list, and two of them are dead. So, you know, it seems like someone is is um, removing the whole project. Oh. Whoa, look at this. We have like more than 180 miles, and that's just when I checked. Maybe it was 200? I don't know. I mean, luckily this car is quite fast, but that's still a while. Should I turn on the engine sounds for you? again and we're almost there 20 miles now comes the most annoying part the landing <sighs> all right let's see I'm curious to see this is basically the only lead we have right now, as far as I know, I mean, there's probably more, um, and there's, again, in the warehouse, um, there's still the computer that we don't know the password for. We have the passcard, but then you also need a password. We don't have that. Or if we have, then <laughs> I didn't notice that we do. Um, but apart from this, we've basically talked to everyone. Uh, I think we've asked them about all the topics. So, um, John Claus is our guy. Let's descend down to altitude zero. Mm. 
the the number 069 what is that is that the heading i should pay more attention that might be the heading i actually i can t yeah it is see ah and look if i turn the car the the topmost um number of those in this like circle uh changes so the heading changes but then the the number below that stays the same and i think that this is like the heading we need to go to yeah that, that would make sense to find our destination it's just kind of you know redundant because we already have this white stripe at the bottom anyway saving as always in the car before going out of the car always safe um and here we go let's shoot i'm so sure there's going to be shoot shooting <laughs> in Reno at a small office complex. The building is fairly new, being designed in the post-nuclear period. As I walk in, I see a gray-haired man about 50 sitting at a large table. Professor Claus. The man looks up with a shocked look. How did you find me, he says. It's my business finding people. I give him my credentials and background on the Linsky case. <laughs> what is this man doing? That would be a cool ringtone because it has the right length, it's catchy, and it's retro, which is always cool, right? You have this reference to a game that now you know. That would be a cool ringtone. I, d I don't know anything about like ringtone websites anymore, but uh, I'm sure it's out there. I I'm sure someone has ripped that out of the game, and that is a cool ringtone. Um, it's my business finding people. That's so cool. Um. Look at this guy. He doesn't look too worried, though. He he looks more like you know. Like, by the way, did you notice his um, left eye is like greenish? His right eye isn't. This might be just the funky graphics with the limited uh, color palette. But uh, remember when we talked to the cop and we asked the cop about? Oh God, what was it? Was it Law and Order? Yeah. When we uh, asked him about Law and Order, he like kind of started doing this. And I noticed that his eye, his left eye, turned green. So I don't know, it might be the color palette, but maybe there's something going on there. Maybe this guy already has a hole in his head. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but let's start with it, actually. Let's see what happens. Check his eye. See that? They always do something, like, with their eyes, if you ask about law and order. There, there's something going on. Like, it triggers the, the thing, man. I don't like them, but what can be done? They have as much right to express their opinion as anybody. Fair enough. Um, but your green eye is twitching when you talk about it. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, let's cut right to the case. Tell me about the whole Karlinski. Karl and I used to work together but we had a falling out over Mrs. Lightbody, which I do not understand. She was my chick, and he took her away. You guys have have interesting taste in, in ladies. He had been trying to get in touch with me, but I wouldn't return his calls. I was sorry to hear about his death. Okay. Wow. They, they really had a fight over this lady. Um... Well then, what about his daughter? Did you maybe try to flirt with the daughter to get back to him? Little Sylvia. She's Carl's daughter, yes I know. I imagine she's grown up by now. Yes, she is. And uh, she's a lip licker, if you want to know. Um, let's ask about Laura some more. I should really go in the order I have written it down to not forget about any topic, but then I kind of want to ask them the way it feels natural to me. Dolores, what can I say other than she's a babe? Well, I'm happy you feel this way. The chick can really move on the dance floor. Well, there you have it, you know. She's got qualities, man. She's got qualities. Um, 
And look at him. He looks so happy with his green eye. Terminator eye. Uh, let's ask about the cop. Did the cop talk to you? Did he find you? No, of course he didn't. Did I? Steve Clements. Yeah, I did. Um, tell me about the medical examiner. Did you talk to him by any chance? or No, you didn't. Why would you? Um, let's talk about the student. You can tell me something about Carl's student, right? I know you broke up, but um, you might know about... What's his name? Wiener. No? Oh, man, okay. Um, what about the side chick of Kalinsky? Don't know anything about it? Wow. Um, did the other private investigator talk to you? Hmm? He didn't. So apparently if people are not lying and not withholding information, and I probably should use the whole bribing and threatening thing a bit more, I assume, at this point, because why did they, you know, it's not there for just one character, right? But assuming people are not holding back, then I probably have dug deeper at this point, deeper than the uh, cop and deeper than the other private investigator. Now, I don't know if the Sonny Fletcher was even on this case, but he had something to do with the whole thing. So, um, Tell me about yourself, actually. No, wait, that's the insurance agent. But what I wanted to ask about yourself, what's your name? John Claus. Why can I not remember Claus? Klaus is a German name, so... I'm a neuroscientist and I feel my life's in danger because of my work with MTC. Tell me about MTC. And now we can finally know, is this the right way to spell it? Yes, it is. I was hired by MTC, which is the Management Training Center for Gideon Enterprises. You know what? This is going to go in my notebook right now, exactly in this way. Management Training Center. I'm trying to write fast, but then it comes out all garbage. That's a doctor's problem, isn't it? Um, for Gideon. And Gideon and is enough. Um, okay. So now we know that there's a connection between MTC and Gideon Enterprise. It's the management training center for Gideon Enterprise. That's that's that, that kind of thing probably exists, most likely exists, but I've never heard of like a company um, corporation, MTC corporation, you know, a whole basically company that is just a management training center for yet a different uh, enterprise. Uh, they put me to work on a project called Overlord. This guy knows some stuff, so... Overlord is MTC's project, writing that down. They, they, they always write it in all caps when they talk about Overlord. It seems very ominous, very important. I soon discovered that my work has nothing to do with management training. Maybe it has to do with um, drilling holes in people's heads, by any chance? Uh, how can I ask about your work for MTC? Uh, you know what? By asking about Project Overlord. I was told that Overlord was a project designed to enhance an executive's mental capacity and performance by drilling holes. Um, <laughs> but as the project progressed, I grew suspicious. When I started asking questions, I was threatened. I can do that too. I figured it was time to go underground for a while. Maybe I should threaten him so that he would tell me more about it. By the way, he's doing this thing with his eyes again. But is it the same he did when I asked him about law and order? I think it is. Twitching. Green. So, okay, so, so that's interesting. Finally, we can make some, you know, connections. The puzzle kind of, you know, becomes a bit more complete. So now we know that, like, three of these terms that we had written down. I had no idea what they meant. We finally know MTC Corporation is basically part of Gideon Enterprises. Um, they started Project Overlord. These scientists were working on it. Probably Kalinsky as well. I'm still not sure about that, actually. Maybe Kalinsky wasn't. Um, and then apparently Project Overlord was not actually 
what they told the scientists it would be. Um, and then he started asking questions, and he was threatened, and so now he went underground. It's kind of weird, though. Like, if you have scientists working on a secret project, how can you have them, you know, do their science and help you out if you actually don't tell them what it's about? I would rather, uh, like, rather pay them a lot so they would shut up, but actually give them the information necessary to do the job. Um, let's talk about Gideon Enterprises then. Gideon Enterprises is the parent company of MTC. Okay, yeah, but I'm not sure of the true relationship. Okay, I, I kind of want to know more about Project Overlord. Do you think I should threaten him? But I'm always, I'm always afraid that if I start threatening or bribing people, it like kind of goes the other way, and people completely shut up and completely block. Um, I'm, I'm coming from a Morrowind kind of perspective, I think, where you had bribing and threatening as well, and if it went right perfect people would talk to you but if it didn't work um, then basically people would just completely block and say I'm not talking to you ever again um, so I'm kind of hesitant to go down that road um, let's see what else we can ask him though I still have you know what I have two things written down here and I have completely forgotten what it was about I can check the stream later on um, and one of them is Bishop can't help him the other one was Saints Church. No, nothing. Okay. Um, did I ask about Carl, Carl Davis? I did, right? Hmm. Um, let's ask him about the other two scientists also working on Project Overlord. One of them called Maurice Gribble. You don't know about your colleagues? Are you? Are you serious? Maybe we do have to threaten him because he should definitely know about the guys he worked with, right? Other scientists he worked together with? He should know something. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we should. Let's ask him about everything else first in case he, like, blocks us. Um, so this is there. Um, what else do we have? Not much, actually. I think we asked him most of the stuff. Um, did we ask him about the insurance agent? Yeah, I, think, I think we did, yeah. Um, anything? Oh, let's ask him about the password. My password is Pawn. D what? Like, <laughs> I asked him his password, and he gives me his password. Like, you know, I didn't even specify your password for this or that. I, it's just your password, and then, yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, well, that's going on my paper, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So let's put that down. Um, password, colon, pawn. And I will make a big box around it. Great, he just gave me his password. Yeah, lol. <laughs> that's really lol, because, like, <laughs> you know, and apparently he's one of these people, like, if, if you want to know one thing about security, do not use the same password multiple times, or at least not everywhere, because, you know, then if you give out your password, let's say this is his, you know, I mean, this is like 2033, there's probably no Facebook, but let's say, you know, this is his password for his Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, then now I have access to everything. So if you give up your password that easily, at least have different passwords, please. Let's ask him about some more stuff. Um, because this guy is actually talking a lot, so I feel bad about threatening him. But I have a feeling he knows more. But first, let's ask him about um, the pass card. He hands me his green pass card. What is it with this guy? Okay, I mean, I mean, he's crazy cooperative, actually. He's giving me his green pass card. He's giving me his password. I really don't think we need to threaten him. Because he's just... Like, I can probably ask him about his house keys, and he would probably give them to me. Um, there's one more thing. Ne he knows everything, man. I was given a Nexus terminal. Right. Remember the warehouse? I mean, you probably saw it all the time, and, and I just didn't, but remember the warehouse? The computer screen, when we had it on, on, on the whole screen? It said Nexus right at the top. 
so that's an access terminal. I was given an access terminal, a pass card and a password by MTC to work on Overlord. This allowed me to access the central computer. So now we can actually go back. You know what? I'm so curious. I want to know what's there. I think I'm going to do this now. Um, you know, the, the whole time I'm thinking, what's the connection between like process, uh, Project Overlord and the three scientists on that paper, and MTC and all that jazz, uh, and Kalinsky and Carl Davis, um, who, by the way, you know, Carl Linsky, Carl Davis, kind of, uh, I don't know if that's intentional, but they do play a lot uh, of, of word games with the names, you know, Light Buddy, Dull. Um, so I wonder if, if these all work together, or if like Kalinsky and and um, Carl Davis were like on a completely different level. Obviously there's a connection, because in the warehouse of Kalinsky there was the, uh, the MTC Nexus terminal, or one of them. And he had the list of these scientists, but maybe they were actually like supervising uh, the project, you know, like maybe they were from MTC and, you know, I don't know, or for, from Gideon, I don't know. Uh, let's figure it out. You know what? I'm not going to threaten him again. I know I'm, I'm not using this feature enough. I'm never threatening anyone. I'm never bribing anyone apart from this one guy. You know, I punched the guy who was beaten up anyway. It's kind of mean, um, but he kind of wanted all my money anyway. Um, this guy is so cooperative, I really don't know why I would, like, punch him. Um, anything else I should ask him? Anyway, we've asked about Law and Order. Um, yeah, insurance, is this, this is in, no. Um, yeah, let's get to the warehouse. Let's do some shooting and get into this computer. And then it's bedtime. Maybe. Okay. Thanks, because you were actually helpful, man. Wow. The thing is, however, you know, he, he gave me his pass card and his password. But we already have a pass card for the computer in the warehouse. So I'm not sure if the pass card and password he gave us right now will work on that terminal, because I have a feeling it might be for yet a different Nexus terminal. Because, you know, what what is our pass card for otherwise? Anyway, uh, navigation system, would you please take us to Kalinsky's warehouse, which is, oh boy, which number is it? Um, there it is. It's the four, six, seven, five. Destination locked. And autopilot engaged. Um, to, to draw some, some parallels to other, to other um, games, um, the whole navigation code system reminds me a bit of Metal Gear Solid. Uh, I've only played the first part of Metal Gear Solid, and there you had the, this radio, I, I forgot the name, but you had kind of like a radio system, um, and people would have numbers, like phone numbers basically, uh, with which you could reach them. And when I played the game for the first time, I wrote down all these numbers. And then when I played the game the second time, I tried reaching these people, um, with those numbers before they were actually introduced in the game, in the plot. And, you know, with some, like, it didn't work, there was just, like, no connection or whatever, uh, but with some it, it actually worked. So they actually, you know, kind of built that into the game that you could actually, if you had the code from a previous playthrough, you could actually, you know, kind of engage these people earlier, which is super cool. Um, super cool, because it makes the whole game feel so much more alive and realistic and engaging, and I don't know, I, I love that kind of stuff. And it shows that, they, you know, the developers cared about it. I wonder about the very same thing here. If you know this game, if you've played it and you've tried that, or read that in a wiki, um, let me know. Um, that would be cool to know, you know, can you go to these locations before you learn about them? If you, you know play it the second time and you just have the list of all the location codes? Probably yes, because it's kind of like it doesn't really build up. But yeah, that reminds me of Metal Gear Solid, which is definitely one of the greatest games I've ever played. That would be something I would play again on stream, but I want to kind of do blind playthroughs. I think blind is so much more fun than non-blind, so unlikely. Descending, please. And 
something else reminds me about another game. I, I talked about Morrowind a lot, which obviously is one of my favorite games of all times as well. Morrowind didn't have a fast travel system, but it had this. Um, it had different means of transportation that would take you to places more or less immediately, like the Silt Strider, which is like this huge kind of crap. And you know, and this kind of autopilot reminds me a bit of it. Um, actually, it's more like GTA's taxi mode, to be honest. But whatever. Okay, let's save. Oh, let's save because you know what's going to happen, right? Warehouse, we're going to be shot at. So we might die. So saving is definitely important. Here we go. Oh, shit. My reaction times are horrible. Damn it. really getting better at this, I have a feeling, but at least I didn't die, so hey, yes, we know the introduction to the warehouse at this point, well, you might not know it if you have tuned in at some point, but we've been here before, it's a warehouse, and in that warehouse we have a hidden, hidden laboratory, and there's a computer, a terminal, and we did not manage to get access to it beforehand, because we didn't have the password, we did get a password now, so... So let's see. I remember now why I wrote down Bishop. Um, in Kalinsky's apartment, there was a chess game, and one um, piece was missing was the bishop. Um, I'm thinking of this now because the guy said his password is pawn. And I think pawn is also one of the figures on the chessboard. Is it? I think it is. You can tell I'm not playing chess much. Maybe I should. Um, okay, so blue. Look, now it says input blue password. Did it say blue password before? Did it specify? Wait. Pawn is not correct. Wait a second. What does it mean? Pawn is not correct. Did the ah oh, damn it? So we have two pass cards ap apparently. Um, because we had one before, and now the the guy um, Claus, Claus actually John Claus, John Claus by the way always reminds me of John Claude Van Damme. Uh, John Claus gave us his pass card and his password, and he named the color of him. And I thought, well, that's not so important because anyway, we're going to just put them in the computer and that's it. Um, but now here it says blue pass password. So I wonder if if we have the John Claude, John Claus pass card in? Pawn is invalid. Damn it. Pawn is invalid. Can, is, is there a possibility to specify which card to put in? Let's see again. Um, test the computer. No. Mm. Damn it. Okay, you know what? Let's try one more time. Yeah. Enter it. And so, ah, it specifically asks for the blue pass card, so we don't have a choice but to enter this pass card. Okay, I see. Um, so this terminal asks specifically for the blue pass card, which apparently is not the one we got from John Claus. I didn't pay attention because I was like, well, you know, you cannot specify anyway which item to use. Um, but now it becomes clear that we have to find another terminal. Um, damn it! Um, and John Claude's <laughs> John Claus's password does not work here. Um, we do have a list of passwords that have to still be decoded. Um, I don't know how or where we could possibly decode them. You know what? I think. I think it's a good time to, to call it a day after all because um, I thought we, you know, now something exciting happens and, and a whole new bunch of, of things will open up. 
didn't might though if I just hit the right button um, but I think that's enough for today uh, I guess so um, yeah uh, we, we saved just before in the car before we were shooting at people um, so that's cool so let me turn that off actually flump um, so at this point thank you for tuning in um, to, to everyone who has tuned in over the whole time I don't know I, d I didn't really pay attention I think we had like five people at some point so cool like I didn't expect that I mean two of them actually are people I know so um, that's like a bonus but um, you know what we could do um, we could do the rate thing like I learned about raids before by just watching some streams and by having been in a raid. The thing is, none of my people are actually online. Well, one is online. Let's just try it. I don't know how it works, but let's just try this. Um, I hope I'm doing this correctly. We're anyway only three people, but let's try. So, um, thank you. See you next time, hopefully. Thank you, Tararia. Thank you, Babchik. And let's try this raid thing. Here we go. Yeah, that seems to work. Cool. I didn't know how it works, but apparently just putting in slash rate is the right thing to do. So are you ready to rate? Let's go.